So could you, while I'm just setting this up, uh, Synth Phenomics, could you introduce yourselves, what your backgrounds are? Uh, sure. Short, make it brief. <laughs> um, sure. Uh, I am Synth. You can find me on YouTube at youtube.com slash S-I-N-T-H-E. Um, I'm the in-house left-wing debater for a channel called The Crucible. You can check them out as well. Um, that's about it for me. Uh, Phoenix, you want to plug yourself and um, um, tell your background? Sure. Um... I'm uh, Twitch at twitch.tv slash phenomics, P-H-E-N-O-M-I-K-S. Uh, I'm also on Twitter as phenomics, uh, and uh, we do politics streams. Um, I'm a trans girl, so we talk about trans stuff sometimes. Great. And yep. then Nuance, my friend, uh, I guess you haven't really done an introduction. We just chatted, so... Yeah, Nuance Bro across all the various platforms, YouTube primarily, uh, make videos and stuff about politics. All right, so what would the room like to start with? Would we like to start with the don't say gay bill or transgenderism in sports? I'll, I'll give that to the floor for a sec. Um, I guess in the order that it's um, written, we could just start with transgenderism in sports. Great, okay, so... Nuance, I'm going to give you, uh, actually, you know what, this is a right-wing channel, so I'll give the other side. Uh, this is really probably going to be Nuance and I versing you two. I don't really see it, it, they're that going any other way on, on this conversation. So, Synth Phenomics, if you want to give a quick one-minute take on your opinions on transgenderism in sports, and uh, then Nuance and I will, will jump in with our takes, and then uh, the floor will be open. Really quickly, Lauren, could you also cam up? Uh, yeah, I can put on my virtual cam. Just give me a second here. Okay. All right. Um, I guess in the, in the meantime, I'll just go ahead and give my quick uh, one-minute spiel. Um, in the case of trans people in sports, um, I think it makes perfect sense to keep, the, um, keep I guess, the, the uh, standard of allowing women, uh, regardless of their background in sports. I don't think it makes much sense to push trans women out of sports. I think the fairness argument doesn't make much sense logically, um, and the argument of social um, the uh, social consequences doesn't make much sense either, given the um, sort of like the lack of any negative social consequence so far. Um, I think that we've seen what happens when you allow trans women in sports, and it's just nothing bad seems to happen. Um, so I don't see any reason why we change the policies we have now um, and push them out of it entirely. It seems like a um, like a strange um, a strange standard to set. Uh, if you know, if you want to like go ahead and uh, give a quick one minute as well. Great. Oh, sorry. Quick second. I, I'm sorry. Sure. My uh, my cam isn't. Um, I've tried to turn on my virtual cam, but it's not working for some reason. Is that all right, Phenomics? I apologize. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Uh, so, did, Phenomics, your thoughts? Sure. Um, I think that broadly, transgender integration in sports is a good thing. I think that um, it solidifies the societal message that trans women are women and trans men are men. Personally, I know a lot of, um, or I know multiple trans men who have uh, quit sports because they had to compete in the women's league as opposed to the men's league. Um, and I obviously know that the, the same can the same problems can occur in trans women. Um, and I know that this year going into uh, what might be my senior track and sports season, there's a lot of uh, question into which one uh, I'll actually be going into, um, probably going into mail. Um, but, uh, I, I think that broadly the, uh, there isn't much merit to like a, a fairness argument because that wasn't a, that's not why women's sports were created and B that, uh, women sports aren't fair inherently. There's no uh, way to make sports fair. Um, so I think that in general, we should just strive for uh, what has the best societal consequences in terms of creating our sports categories. Interesting. So you yourself will potentially be trying to play in, in women's sports this upcoming year, just to clarify. Yeah. Okay. Uh, nuance, bro? Yeah. Um, so I don't, I don't care about women's sports, to be honest. Uh, I don't really watch them. Uh, maybe if it's like happening at the same time as a male sport, something like uh, combat sports and the women are competing. Uh, I can I can enjoy that. Um, but I think it's a bit silly to suggest that, you know, obviously different people, different genetic backgrounds are going to have advantages, disadvantages, and, you know, even within the same sex. But when you introduce trans men on average, I'm sorry, trans women into women's sports, on average, they're going to have 
a much greater advantage in the vast array of physical sports than biological women are. This is just, you know, this is a fact. So um, I, I, I'd honestly be open to letting the women in each league vote if they actually want to compete with a trans woman. I think that would actually be a decent compromise. So the people who ha are at, you know, if they truly believe and they want to live by their principles, then, you know, all the best to them I, i'd be willing to give them that but um i don't think it's something that should be imposed on them if you're talking about societal consequences well it seems like more women would be harmed um than uh than than, than trans women uh would be harmed well yeah so my opinion on this is uh for the most part you know transgenderism has come about uh or for a lot of people, they would say it's always been around. Um, the way that we treat it is typically through social changes today, whether you agree with that treatment or not, how we treat people with dysphoria is we try to change them socially. We try to change them, you know, on a superficial level, whether it be surgery, uh, changing hair, putting on makeup. These are some of the treatments that we use for gender dysphoria today, whether you disagree with them or not. When we talk about sports, sports are not categorized by superficial femininity or masculinity. They are categorized by biological categories. Even within sports groups, if it's just, you know, male MMA, you know, female weightlifting, we categorize these things by biological standards, height, weight, female, male, not by the more superficial things. So I don't see why we should be allowing people in any category based on their gender identity rather than their biology. All right, uh, so I guess we can get into it. Um, nuance, bro, it, it actually doesn't seem like we're going to have much to disagree on here. Um, you said it's a bit silly to say, and then it, it seemed like you actually didn't point to anything that you thought that was silly in what we said. It seems like you were just, um, you almost like moved off of that because it doesn't have much disagreement with us at all. You said that you'd be down to let women in each league vote. Um, I don't think there seems to be strong evidence that women in these leagues um, uh, oppose letting trans women in, given that the existing standards are already decided by the leagues, right? So uh, you also say it's, it's not something you think should be imposed. It's not really currently Im imposed. I I'm sure you'd agree with that. Um, they're, the leagues are sort of controlled by the market, right? I, I, I wouldn't agree with that necessarily. So, for example, the recent uh, races with like Leah Thomas and the mm -hmm. USA Swimming, I guess, controls the uh, the rules for, for that. Or No, no, I'm sorry. That, well. Didn't the NCAA dictate the rules even for, for USA Swimming? I think there was a disagreement between USA Swimming and the NCAA. So the NCAA, I think, controlled the rules for that one. And, you know, the, the women who were competing in that race, I don't know how they would vote. Uh, it'd be interesting if, you know, the ones who are in that race in particular got to choose, how would they vote? You know, I think that's, uh, I'd like to see the results of that. So you I think, think Sav at says each meet? someone okay. from that. Sorry, I, did, I think Sav says did uh, interview someone that was either in that race or supposed to be in that race who said they were very against it. So I, I think that. So when you say, when you say imposed nuance, bro, you're talking about it being imposed by, um, you're talking about it being imposed by the corporations who own these, um, who own these businesses. You don't think they should be able to impose their, um, the, their will to run their business however they want. Well, I, I'm not even entirely sure how like collegiate sports are organized. I don't think it's like private corporations I, I think it's like a it'd be private businesses they would I don't, i'm not sure they're all incorporated but exactly how they're organized i think uh the people in you know I, i'd be probably in support of legislation that allows the uh you know the people in the race themselves the actual competitors um to to vote on that you think the and do you want people to vote like at every single meet that like before you get to the meet you don't sure, know what you're going to be competing with you don't why know not? who's going to be able to compete sure why not Probably just impractical. So it's more <laughs> impractical for them to hold a vote that would take like, I don't know, 20 seconds than to allow. Biden oh, you just want to have them like just a, just asking them is what you're saying? Like just like a show of hands or something? It's like everyone in the room say I or something? You can, it, you can make it private too so they don't have to feel like the pressure of, uh, you know, the, the public knowing how they voted individually. So. It seems like, well, and then you also want some kind of legislation. You're saying some kind of government legislation on what these corporations can do. Sure. I think like a highly bureaucratic method of like pushing out, I guess, a um, a demographic that you don't even really know if they should or shouldn't be posed, uh, pushed out in the first place. 
Sure. I mean, it's bureaucratic from the government level, and then you have the bureaucratic rules being pushed by the NCAA when they're yeah. putting up these standards of like, okay, you have to have testosterone that tests no higher than 10 nanomoles per liter and stuff, and it has to be for this amount of period of time, and you know, here's the mechanisms by which we're going to monitor that or not monitor that. That seems pretty bureaucratic, too, so... So what you're saying is you're taking it, you're not like, you're not like removing that bureaucracy. You're just adding a government bureaucracy that's going to control what these corporations can and can't do. You're on board with this, right? We could remove that bureaucracy. I mean, for all we know, we could have it so you don't even have like the testosterone requirements. Just allow these, uh, you know, the competitors to decide if they want to allow a biological male into a female. Uh, you, know. you know, nuance, bro, I... If I'm not really sure what your, the rest of your political views are, but if you're arguing for democracy in the workplace, I think we're on board. <laughs> I just don't. I don't think it's the case that these. I don't think it's the case that these women are gonna like want trans women not to compete in these sports. It seems like they have no issue with it currently. Some of them do. I'm, I'm sure, right? But the vast majority don't seem to. Um, or at least we don't have strong evidence of that. I have no idea. Seems... I think it would vary by state, probably drastic. Yeah, you, you say it seems mm -hmm. like they have no issue with it, but I don't think sure. too many people would feel comfortable saying publicly if they did have an issue with it, given the, I would argue, public lynchings that happen against people who are <laughs> transphobic, what? even against people who would be, uh, obviously I mean that uh, hyperbolically, um, not literal lynchings, but social lynchings that happen against people who are deemed as transphobic, even people that are supposed allies and believe and support transgenderism, they get taken down just for being political commentators saying, hey, I might just oppose, you know, transgender people playing in sports. You really think an individual athlete who's trying to save their ass in their career is going to feel comfortable speaking up about their opinion on transgenderism when they have no... Shouldn't that show up in polling data? In polling data? Yeah, I mean... Polling data of the swimmers? Well, we don't have polling data of swimmers, but we have polling data of, like, women in general. Of women in general? Yeah, it doesn't... All women are athletes where they... No, I, I'm aware. I'm just saying we have, like... Oh, well, I, I th even in I even athletics, right? What 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 evidence do you have that there's like, go ahead. Yeah, people who have their career on the line, people who have their education on the line, scholarships on the line are probably going to have a lot more investment in this subject than the average woman who is like, oh, whatever, sure, you know. So what you're saying is that general polling is as relevant. So what you're saying is you don't think it's the case that it could be um, you don't think it's the case that it could even be measured uh, whether or not there is the case that women have this um, this standard of, of, of these women in sports, at least. Have a standard of not having like not wanting trans women in. You don't think that could be measured? You don't think we, there's, there's anything we any way we could know that? I think, I think Nuance Bro's suggestion of uh, having you know a vote that is not public where people can't see what you voted would probably be the best way of measuring that. Okay, and you so a show of hands is just uh, <laughs> a show of who to lynch, right? So you you're saying that this this crucial decision that you think should decide whether or not we do or don't allow trans women into sports. You you're saying you don't know if it's the case that it would actually bear out the trans in our sports because of that sorry repeat that yeah you're saying that you don't even know if it's the case that this this decision would bear out against trans women in sports you think we should be put to a vote and you're not sure what the results of that vote would be i'm, I'm not saying that. that that's nuance pro suggestion i'm kind of defending it because i think okay an interesting concept um you know let people live and die by what what they want to support politically, right? If, if that's what you want to go forward with, sure, it's unfortunate for the people who would maybe be in the minority and say, actually, no, I, uh, I don't want to compete with people who have a biological advantage. But sometimes you just have to let things play out and let people figure things out for themselves. I, I right? want the people who have you know, something at stake to live with the consequences of their actions. So if they're going to be, you know, pro trans and pro trans women in sports, and these are women, biological women who are in those sports, then okay, like you get to vote on it, you know, you get to live with the consequences of your actions. If you're someone who opposes that, then you can also live with the consequences of those actions and not have trans women competing against you uh, if, you know, the majority of your teammates or whatever support that. So. You know, I, I we understand that, like guess. why we would have minority rights and systems like that though right what do you mean well like for example you wouldn't want like uh you you, you wouldn't want black people or you wouldn't want uh white people in 19 uh or in like 
1750, right? You wouldn't want them to be voting on uh, whether to abolish slavery or not. You would want like a constitutional protection for it to make sure that a minority can be protected from some extra harm. So when we're talking about like cis women versus trans women, we're talking about cis women, a very, very few select cis women who, uh, who have to compete against a very, very specific trans woman or on a broad societal scale, uh, just cis women who don't get to be in get don't get to see other cis women in the the top scale as often uh if even um if that's even true whereas trans women have a, a mass suicidality and the cultural perpetuation that trans women aren't women has a as a great tremendous consequence so there's a, like reason to have like a minority right system here so you're against the concept of majority rule democracy i'm in favor of majority rule and minority rights i'm a liberal so you're against the concept of democracy, like people vote on something. You, what? You want, you want Constitutions aren't anti-democracy. Well, if you're going against the will of the people, that's kind of anti-democratic. So. It wouldn't be anti-democratic to have constitutional project projections. Um, so if we want to, no, if we want, if we want to make sure the democracies last long term, having a constitution is really important for that. I think the nuance, their point is like, you couldn't have the majority vote to take away, you know, women's right to vote. There, there are some like intrinsic things, but I, well, but, I think but it was the, a, it was a vast majority that implemented the women's right to vote in the first place. Like it, they didn't have it, and then the vast majority voted. It just it doesn't does. Yeah, that doesn't really address the point. That well, it's not true, and it doesn't address the point, right? The point. So that even it could be the case, right? That we could even grant the idea that it is, right? Just for the sake of not disputing something empirical. Um, it would still be the case that we wouldn't want it to be the that we wouldn't want people to be able to just vote away uh, women's right to vote. We wouldn't want that to be allowed, right? Because otherwise it subverts democracy. You, and so we can't just... You can do that. You can amend the Constitution. We can amend the Constitution. This is correct. And we want the Constitution amended, right? We want the Constitution to have certain rights enshrined into it, right? So in the case that we want to preserve a democracy long term, we don't just, we don't just want like democracy to be willy-nilly. We want democracy to have like rules and regulations that make sure it stays democratic long term. So we have minority rights because of this. Yeah, I think the... The issue is the type of rights being demanded. So you think that transgender women's right to play in sports should be enshrined in some sort of law? No, I think that the um, I think that the way that works best is to allow these um, to allow the social norms of society to continue to progress forward and allow these um, private companies um, to make decisions in a reasonable way. I think that the way they're doing it currently is, given our, our current social norms is pretty reasonable, letting trans women be in sports, it doesn't seem like there's any reason to push back against this. Um, if you want to say there's some, like, there's a place for workplace democracy there, I'm not going to oppose this, um, but I, I don't think it's the case that this is a solid argument for banning trans women from sports. I don't think it even, it doesn't even seem that you want to ban trans women from sports, nuance, bro. It seems like you just don't really care that much. Would you support, uh, would you support ab abolishing like even sex segregated uh, or even whatever gender segregated sports uh, at all? Like, would you support banning that? Like long term and like a like a hundred years or something? Why, why a hundred years? Why not now? Well, no, because no, nobody would ever support banning it here. Um, we I might support. What do you mean nobody? What if what if I support it? What if do you? A lot of okay. people that support it. If you support and, uh, it, maybe. Do you support it? If I support it, then you would support it. Is what you're saying. I'm just, I'm asking you. Do you support it? Uh, I'm I'm open to it. Listen, I because again, I told you I don't care <laughs> in sports. Uh, I, I think it would actually be a good way for women to see how men are superior in every physical way when it comes to sports, and uh, you know, it would it would be just an open an open category. You don't have to worry about transes and sports and stuff if it's just the open category of men's sports. That's an interesting position. <laughs> you have, we have base gender abolitionist nuance bro over here. Um, he wants it right now. He wants to. He wants to. He wants to. He doesn't just want trans women in sports. He wants women out. No, I, want to jump in here. <laughs> I don't think nuance bro is a gender abolitionist. I think he's a male supremacist. <laughs> this is, this is a, a smart conniving way that my gender can obliterate all of women's spaces. It's genius. <laughs> uh. I, I genius is an interesting way to describe it. Um, I think it's it's certainly an interesting position. I think that if it's the case that we like um maybe we have some ability for certain people who wouldn't be able to access sports entirely, like um um allowing people on testosterone to compete in sports, for example, with obviously with some range or some caps for safety reasons. I think that maybe this idea could even could even be feasible. Um, I just don't expect it to be super feasible um right now. Like why aren't you right now? 
I I have. I know. I, I was really clear with the answer. Why trans? Wait. It was made well, why not that abolish sex uh, or gender you're, segregation of? So you're saying you you're saying I haven't. You're saying I haven't answered the question, and then you're. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, it, it seems to me like you you're you're sounding a lot like mm -hmm. racist whites of the 1950s that wants to keep black people out of sports. Like, why would you not support getting rid of any segregation in sports? Why are you not an anti-segregationist? So I think it's really interesting that you've a said I haven't answered the question and then responded to my answer to the question. This is really fascinating to me. Um, so the reason why I would say that it doesn't make much sense to push for this now is because I don't think it's going to provide any sort of like massive benefits to push for this immediately. I think if you say like a hundred years down the line or something, should we abolish it? Yeah, sure, whatever. It's just that I don't, I don't think it's really super important at the moment. Well, you know, I, I remember there was a great man who once said, "Justice delayed is justice denied." <laughs> so it seems like you want to delay. So that. true. So true. Is that what's going on? So true. You caught me. So I to get back to the. You want to delay <laughs> and deny. <laughs> so to get back. Worthwhile question. Is it really? Yeah. It, absolutely. Okay. Okay. Worthwhile question. Why not abolish all? You know, gendered categories altogether, especially if there is no real, meaningful biological difference between men and women. Um, there's wait, there's. Do you think there's no meaningful biological difference between men and women? I, I think the uh, the people arguing that transgender people should be able to play in in women's sports seem to think that. Do you have I ever said that? So why would you? Okay, so you acknowledge there is a meaningful biological difference between men and women, but you still want transgender uh, people to play in women's sports? Yeah. So the biological difference doesn't matter to you then. So why not abolish all categories? The, okay. So the biological difference between trans women and cis women is a much smaller difference than the difference between cis men and cis women. Like one of them has like... Why, why, is, that, why is that the comparison? Because we're saying we want to abolish the category. So... <laughs> they would be really relevant here the the biological difference between trans women and cis women is smaller than the biological difference between men and women but yes do you do you believe that transgenderism for someone to be transgender they have to fit into a certain appearance they have to do a certain amount of drugs they have to you know they, they have to do some sort of change to themselves to be trans. Sorry. Or do you think someone can be transgender without, you know, taking hormones or cutting their dick off, right? What is your what is your definition of transgender? What is my de I'm yeah. what is my definition of transgender? Yeah. So I know the question you're asking cuz you use that word in it. So someone who wants to be the other gender and is saying that they identify as the other gender. Okay, so you'd answer the question with no then, right? And I'd answer it with no as well. To be to that has nothing to do with like Okay. None, none of your definition has anything to do with hormones. Okay, so if you want to be transgender, you don't have to change anything biologically about yourself. So why would you say, why would it even matter if, if you can find a, some sort of statistical difference between trans women and cis women when you're saying that to be trans, you don't have to change yourself biologically at all. So men on average are taller are stronger, have larger shoulders, larger lungs, larger hearts, all of these different things, and they could just say, I am a woman now, and be transgender by your definition, and the current through women's sports. The current, stand, the current standards in these organizations do restrict them based on hormones. Do you think that's that something you case? support, though? In, like, in 100 years? No, not in 100 years, but right now, I think it's fine. Because it's important to clarify my answer to your question. I have to make sure that I'm answering clearly and not just giving you like an ambiguous answer. No, wait, wait, like what your position, like what your mor morality is going to change in a hundred years or something. Like, it, no, I think that what we have to understand is what in which your, your, your current. Your I can, current can I answer your question? Was, yeah, please answer. Yeah, yeah. My morality isn't changing in a hundred years, but the conditions in which I'm doing an action are changing in a hundred years. Right. So like what the, if we, if we say like, we don't have the the categorical rule of you should never kill somebody right we have the rule of like you shouldn't kill someone if it's not justified in the situation right so like there's a difference in situations here and i think there's a difference in actions taken because of that morally
No, the, the situation you're describing in the in in the like justified self defense is like the action is self defense, and that's why it's justified. Whereas for the hundred years, you're talking about well, I feel like the norms of society aren't there yet, so therefore I like you're not supporting it. Like, do you support it right now, absent like whatever you think society may or may not accept your position. Wait. We're asking about your position. Yeah, yeah. I know you're asking about my position, but my position is dependent upon what we can and can't do. I think we should do the best we can. I don't think we should do like wild outlandish ideas that don't work. You're king of the universe. Yeah. Okay. You're, I get to snap my fingers. He's arguing for, and someone in this chat mentioned this, a, a thin, you know, he's just trying to like slowly push society in one direction. But it seems like you'll keep going further and further as long as you'll get social validation and society is willing to accept oh, that. Oh, so not social validation. You're mistaken. Admit, admit that <laughs> your view now. You hold. I made my view really clear. That's not ready to make that statement until it is. No, no. I've made accessible. I've made my statement really, really clear. I think in a hundred years, sure. Okay. I said that so, no, because so. Of you years hold on. I let me answer. The, hold on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let me answer Lauren's question really fast. Just a second. Let me answer Lauren's question. So the reason why I say in a hundred years is because right now there's no reason to push for this. We will not be able to get that change. It's ridiculous to push for things that we cannot get. That's what I mean. You want this to happen, but you just don't have the Lauren validation for your ideas for it to be possible yet. You're trying to portray this as though I'm not being like like clear about what i want i've told you several times yeah in the far future i'm fine with this so you do no, think that be fine with it right now if they would allow you to correct no i would be fine with it right now if it would i would be fine with it right now if it would produce good outcomes why wouldn't it produce good outcomes right now because nobody supports it because nobody supports it and because of the fact there'd be a huge social backlash so what, what we'd see is a bunch of people saying he's saying if they allowed it and if they did support it you would be okay you're say you're you're the question you're asking me is if everyone in society was on board with this and there was no transphobia and there was no social backlash and there was no like sexism that might push women out of certain spaces and they're like no adverse consequences socially would I support it the answer is yes and so would you hold on hold on well yeah a hundred percent obvious okay but what what about thirty uh, percent if thirty percent supported it would you uh, would you support it if thirty percent support supported trans women it, currently more than thirty percent already do. No, no, no. I'm saying for this hundred years version of yourself, if if, if society reaches thirty percent acceptance, is that enough for you? If society reaches thirty percent acceptance, is it enough to mold men and women's spaces together? Yeah, for whatever your I have no idea. No, I have no idea. You would support it. You said you wouldn't support it right I now have... because you think the outcomes wouldn't be beneficial or Yeah. Better. Is thirty percent enough for you? Is 30%, so 30% of people alone, I would have no idea whether it would or wouldn't be enough because you ignored all of the other factors I mentioned. So, okay. Like, you can exhale and like sigh condescendingly, but that's not a counter argument. How about 60%? <laughs> it, you're, okay, you, okay. You are doing the same problem, which is you're ignoring all of the other things I mentioned. Did you just forget those? Yeah, give me the other ones. Okay. So it's, can, I, can I jump in? <laughs> go ahead, Laura. Sorry, I'm really, I'm really curious. The yeah. So the hundred years, no HRT, uh, just have every all these spaces mixed. Do you feel that that would destroy women, women's ability to be competitive in in sports? Okay, you might have just not listened. No, it wouldn't destroy women's ability to be competitive. I give you the reasons we could make them still competitive in this market. Why would they still be competitive? Wait, by if we, having them like juicing on tests and stuff? Is that what you I As long as they're not juice, <laughs> as long as they're not like unhealthy, right? I'm okay with them competing in the sports. I'm not sure what you're, so, you're, you're making this weird, wacky argument about like juicing. How, wait, how would women be competitive in sports where they didn't have their own categories? Okay. So it's dependent upon the specifics of the sport, right? But the existing standard of allowing trans women into sports is not going to erode away women's ability to be competitive because they're already in there and they're still competitive. I'm sorry, I just, I want to, I want to go a quick, wait, wait, just a second, just a second. Okay, just a quick poll of the room. Do either of you actually oppose trans women being in, in women's sports right now? Yes. Okay, why? Generally, I think it's uh, stupid, yeah. Okay, I'm glad you guys are being open about your position now. Why do you guys think this? Like we opened, we both opened with that. No, Nuance Bro City didn't care. 
I, I, I don't care, but I think it's stupid. So I, I, I think <laughs> I don't care, but I do care. I just think it's stupid. It's here, I'll, I'll explain. I'll explain. So I think it's obvious that trans women mm -hmm. in biological women's sports have an advantage versus, for example, uh, trans trans men in men's sports. This is you acknowledge this, right? You're saying trans women have have an advantage that's different than 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 cis women. A much greater advantage. A much greater advantage. A much greater advantage over cis women than than who? Than than trans men in men's sports. Trans men in men's trans men in men's sports don't have an advantage. I agree. Trans men in men's sports. Nuance, bro. Which yeah, I mean, they, they can be well, they nobody cares. They would be. No, 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 no. They people do. No, 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 no. You're. You're wrong. No, no, no. You're wrong. They do care. In fact, I whoa, 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 hold on. You guys are both bouncing and Jesus Christ, stop. You guys are bouncing back and forth between each other, not addressing the other side's arguments at all. So there are trans men who want to be in men's sports and they're not allowed in there. Well, wait. People do care. Conservatives do care. You guys push trans men out of men's sports. Let me, let me, let me. So the NCAA allows trans women in women's sports, but not trans men in men's sports, is what you're saying? No, the same. Go ahead, Phoenix. We have different standards, right? Like the the leagues that I'm competing, I know trans men who aren't competing anymore because they had to compete with women, and it was it wasn't something that sure. But in were... those leagues, the, the 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 rules are basically the same for trans men and trans women, right? So like the trans women can't compete with women, and the trans men. You're okay. You you are forgetting your own claim. You said nobody cares about trans men in men's sports. Yes, they do. Conservatives do push them out. You're wrong. Okay, so I'm. Dude, we're talking about the leagues where they're allowed to currently, okay? In those leagues where they compete. No, we weren't. They're not actually really, they're not winning. They're not yeah, winning. It, Outside of like that power walking, and then there was like that one professional boxing fight that person had, and that was it. There's like really not, like they're not winning at the rate that trans women are. Do you think there might be any societal right? factors which would push trans women into sports that trans men Dude, wouldn't be? Do you recognize this? Yeah, yeah. Did you hear what I said? He's not listening at all. That what? <laughs> the societal factors that would push trans women into sports that wouldn't try to push trans men into sports, like being raised a boy, where boys are pushed into sports way more than girls. So, so you, you think that trans? Women Can you address the argument, please? Wait, do, do you are are, are trans to women? It. Which no, no. So, the, but the thing is, like, I, I would imagine a great factor would be that trans women are actually way more competitive in women's sports than trans men are in men's sports. Like, yeah, why would someone want to go to a, in, into a sport where they're just going to get dominated and destroyed? Trans men, so, trans men. So there are plenty of trans men who do want to go into men's sports. They are not allowed to go into men's sports, and they are they feel but, bad because of this. NCAA doesn't allow that. Do you think there are more sports than just the NCAA? Yes, but we're talking about the ones where they're currently We're just... Allowed. We're yeah, talking so, yeah, about the ones... No. Where no. No, 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 no. We are talking about, we are talking about sports broadly. In the spaces where trans people are allowed to compete, we're okay. not seeing trans men compete. So you can't just keep saying conservatives aren't letting them when there are spaces where they are allowed to compete, where they aren't because they simply aren't competitive enough because there are massive biological differences. You cannot just blame biological differences on conservatives that uh, when you're talking about- You're just not addressing the arguments we're making. You're just ignoring them entirely. It's like insane to me. I'm, I will, I'm going to try to make it, I'm going to try to make it really, really clear. If we're saying that like trans men do not want to compete in sports, right? Trans men do not want to compete in men's sports. If we're saying this claim, then you can't just restrict it to a subsection of men's sports because if trans men do want to compete in men's sports, even if it's outside the NCAA, they still want to compete in men's sports. And thus, you would not be correct. You would be the opposite of correct. I'm a conservative, and I think most conservatives would say have at it. If they are being stopped somewhere, I think that's dumb. I think that absolutely okay. women, trans men should be allowed to play in men's sports. Why? Because men's sports is the most competitive in the world. And if you can make it there, like it's not, you're not, no one is going to destroy it through gendered means, right? That's good. Men's Southern. sports, men's sports is not going to be destroyed if women went and joined it. Lauren well, Southern, I'm going to tell my trans male athletes that, uh, that you said trans that. rights. No, there's an exception <laughs> to that. It would be like I'm number one uh, supporter. No, there, there would be an exception to the trans men and men's sports, like as far as competitiveness. And that would be in early, uh, 
puberty development, like in the you know late middle school, early high school, and if that trans male was you know supplementing with testosterone as prescribed by the doctor, you know that would uh, you know there was that what was it Mac Biggs or whatever the person's name was uh, who was uh, competitive and stuff, and yeah, they're being like juiced up, and yeah, they're gonna you know, out compete. 14 year old boys so that's probably not something you would want to encourage so i guess we have one conservative that does i guess what trans trans men not to compete in men's sports um uh well this on this panel um I, I one of the arguments you made earlier was more women would be harmed than trans women um I think if we talk about the number harmed, this would be true. But what's important to also note, Nuance Bro, is that it's not just the number harmed, but the severity of the harm, right? So if we had like, if, if like 75% of a group stubbed their toe, right? Um, and we have to choose between that or 25% of the group just dying or whatever, right? Um, then those two options, we could weigh them and we'd say, we should do the thing that makes 75% stub their toe, not the thing that makes 25% die. Um, when it comes to the impacts on trans people, trans people currently have an incredibly high rate of suicidality. Um, this is far more important than I, I don't know what your what you think the N word the the harm to women would be I guess like um they I don't know they they I guess they feel sad because they like there's like some like percentage decline in the rate at which they like win sports against this trans women opportunity yeah what what happens when a woman kills herself because she doesn't get her scholarship that was gonna bring her family out of poverty or something okay do you think I'm do you think that do you think the trans <laughs> Do you think that do you think that trans women are going to be killing themselves at a lower rate than than cis women when they don't get their scholarships? See, see, that's I don't want to play a game of whose suicide or matters more, right? The or people who commit of <laughs> suicides. Oh my god. Even, even then, even then it's not about okay, well we're going to give you like a specific special kind of right or ability because you're more likely to kill yourself if you don't get it that's not how policies should be made so and it's not a one-to-one -one thing Wait, either like, all you know, a trans woman work. who competes regularly and wins well hold on nuance bro let's respond to the argument that was just made before you guys do the thing you guys keep doing this thing where you like you one of you makes an argument and the other one ping pongs and you just like gish gallop back and forth between the two of you let me let us respond to the argument just made and then you can respond to our argument like, back and forth right one at a time um the the the, the idea that like the scholarship thing will only apply to um will only apply to cis women is just it's not a symmetry breaker here right trans women will also add the supply to them and thus the negative effect of a trans woman not being able to get her scholarship um is just as bad as the negative effect of that cis woman who would have otherwise gotten a scholarship not being able to get one so the argument here doesn't work at all it's not a symmetry breaker um in the case of the in the case of trans women um there is a higher rate of suicidality because of the lack of social acceptance so segregating out the sports league and pushing them out entirely would absolutely be a thing that undermines um, the that undermines the ability for us to get more social acceptance for trans people. In the same way that like segregation in sports undermined our ability to get more uh, to get more um, uh, to get more social support for like viewing black people as normal members of society. The same is true for trans people. And so there's no reason whatsoever why we should consider the harm done to women in this situation, the very minute minor harm um, done to to women in this situation, more valuable than that done to trans women. There aren't enough trans women to push women out of sports, so the harm would be equal and it's honestly it's funny you say more women would be, would be harmed than trans women that's probably not even true either um given the fact that like you'd have to harm them one to one by pushing them out of the sport one at a time you, you just okay. made an argument that there aren't enough trans women to push women out of sports and the answer would be yet i mean look at gen z it's like over 20 percent of them identify as lgbtq plus or whatever compared <laughs> to like the older generation that identifies the same way. you want to ban all gay people from sports i'm sorry you want to ban like all lgbtq people from sports like the whole thing is it's increasing it's going to become an increasing problem so you're saying there's not enough <laughs> when there is like you, 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 you can it's, it's important to kind of stop these things before they become major problems well, and uh you know again one single person or there's an example of like i i think it was like two transgender people who pushed out over 80 women from uh you know qualifying to the next level of a of an event or a sport or whatever and you know that's th what two versus 80 like that, that that's that, it's not a one-to-one -one thing when you say that there's a rise there's a rise in the number of trans people. Can you give us like the numbers on that? Like what? Like it's risen from what to what? Uh, I don't remember. I, I think the difference was something like close to three thousand uh, percent compared to the older generation. What? So this is like same time. Like they're they're all existing in the same time, yet young people are identifying at a rate that's like three thousand percent of what? Almost. 
Okay. What do you, of, what do you mean what? Uh, so 37%, what was the original percent that you like multiplied by? Three, you said 3,300? 3, uh, compared to uh, the older generation. Yeah, what was the older generation? Uh, what do you mean? What was the percentage of the older generation? Do you wait you no you don't think it rose by a percent higher and I know that the LGBTQ one it's like it's it's similar proportion. So that the again the the a tiny tiny estimate, like a a point one percent. Not even because trans people as a total of the population are less than one percent. Would you consider non binary people as trans? Yeah, yeah, they're probably they're they're probably not going to be competing in like um uh, cross sex sports the same rate that like trans women would, right? Can I ask something. I I, 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 I want to kind of get down to the brass tacks of this conversation, which is, you know, when we're talking about this group, it's it's based on a. I, I don't want to say delusion because I know that just immediately makes like progressives see red, but it is like we, we dysphoria, dysphoria is dysphoric. It's not actually what is reality. Like people are not actually biologically women. They feel, oh my, and what? we give, no, 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 no. <laughs> what do you think dysphoria means? Yeah, I was going to ask the same question. You don't feel your mind and your body match, right? you and then, no, I no. Do you know what the word euphoria means, right? So when you have gender dysphoria, it is not a mismatch between your mind and your body. Do you know what dysphoria is, is a specific feeling that you get from uh, what is what is clinically recognized as like a, a mismatch between a mind and a body? Okay, right. Um, and I believe that so mismatch dysphoria, is though is explicitly uh, an and like the antithesis of euphoria, right? It's like a it's a feeling. It's a negative feeling. It can't be like okay. true or false. Um, a mismatch with the mind or bot and body can so be you get a feeling you get a feeling of dysphoria how you find it you get a feeling of dysphoria because of the mismatch Am I getting because of the correct? mismatch between the identity and the body i don't know okay. that the mind okay. is how i would classify it but we could get into the nuance of okay that. that's fine so i i absolutely believe you do see in a lot of different factors mismatches between the mind and the body uh, we see this with age in people some people are mentally you know uh, some people are mentally older than they actually are you have people that are 14 that have incredible minds. You have people getting scholarships to universities way earlier than all of their peers. And they're mentally at a higher level than their peers, right? Then you have people that are mentally at lower levels. You have people that have the minds of five-year-olds for large parts of their life that extend for large periods. And we have to treat them a certain way in order to make their experience in this world better. Their view of the world and how they are experiencing it isn't false. Like they're not lying when- You said it was an illusion. Say. There, there is because they're not five, right? If they go to a doctor's office, you're not going to give them the medicine dosage to a five for a five year old. But their mind genuinely perceives the world that way, and their mind is genuinely wired like that. Okay. No, but if they're so, if they're say and, like and one years to, old, wait, right? Okay. Wait, we do have to make the situation more comfortable for them, and I I think that that is one of those arguments that I do hear from progressives where I'm like, okay, so uh, you know that's that's where the what the argument is for transgenderism. They the body might not be that way, but the mind is, and there are things we can do to make them more comfortable in their experience, like we would with someone who has a mismatch in age or whatever. That's one argument, right? But we still wouldn't let someone who is 40 with the mind of a five-year-old play in children's sports because there's obviously a difference there. You're... And they, they're... Hold on, let's go one, one point at a time. You're galloping at like 80 different arguments here. So the idea that it's a delusion argument it's well you, you made the claim as a delusion right that they're like they believe a thing which is not true right that's what a delusion is when you believe something not true now you're like walking that back you're saying it's not the case they believe something not true um there's nothing they believe that isn't true if they're if they what they believe that you're, you're if they're what they hold on hold on i i, I spoke for like i spoke for like individual. i spoke for like 30 seconds there um you, okay so your claim was just a delusion right you made this claim there is a delusion in believing that that person with the brain of a five-year-old is a five-year-old yes do you think that do you think that necessarily delusional but if you on the outside believe that that then you are delusional. do you think that i believe that do you think i believe a delusional thing about trans women if you think that they are should be treated the same in sports as biological women yes i think that's delusional you think a should statement is a delusion like a moral statement you think would be a delusion i think to if you look trans at women hold on nuance bro let her let her okay 
So I'm trying to ask Lauren about the claim she just made before you move on to a different one, nuance, bro. Lauren, do you think the, a should claim, a moral claim, can be a delusion? Yes, if it's deontology. <laughs> I need an answer to that. Do you think a should claim can be a delusion? Do you have an answer? Honestly, I don't know what, what you're even talking about. I'll explain to you. You just said that the delusion that I have is that I think trans women should be treated a certain way, right? No, it's not a delusion. It's what a delusion means. I don't, you, you made the claim there was a delusion that I have in belief. You analogized it to the idea that somebody would be delusional if they believed like um, somebody with like age regression or something is like a um, like this 40 year old has a five year old brain. Trans women are women and they are the same as biological women and therefore should be able to play in the same sports because they're basically the same. Well, are, and the same as biological women? Of course not. We have different we have different adjectives there for a reason, right? Okay, so they're not the same as so. Okay, so can, could we just call sports cis women's sports like? No, hold on, you're moving away from the weird delusion claim you made. Why is it? <laughs> I thought I thought you thought they were the same, and that's why they should be able to play in the same. You've said category. multiple times. You've you've said that at the beginning of the conversation, and every single time you've said it, we've corrected you. I don't know why it's like hard for you to understand. Of course, there's a difference between trans women and cis women. It's hard for me to understand how you can accept that and still not understand the concept of having gendered sports categories to you can understand the concept we just don't think it's a good ensure. one okay okay we under we know what your argument is right we understand your argument you are just i i don't think you're doing it on purpose i don't think it's intentional but you're not understanding ours it seems like you just you have a bunch of associations with other people you've talked to or maybe like people you've heard about that you've heard talked about and you're projecting those onto us we don't believe that. The left usually doesn't believe that. We d like we have different adjectives there. Of course, we believe there are differences. You think trans women and women are different. You think they are biologically different, but you still think that they should play in the same sports. Yes. So my argument at the beginning was I think that biological categories are important in sports. So you don't think by... I'll walk you through it. You said we categorize these things by biological standards. Height and weight were your examples, right? Yes. Okay. When it comes to height, what sports are we, are we talking about where we categorize it by height? It's, it's, these are just like generalities within men and women. Men tend to be taller, which is why we put them in one category. Women tend to... Oh, you know what? You were saying... Class is um, MMA and fighting sports. We do that. What? what weight class. We have a height class and... Uh, which which say weight weight class? Class? we don't have a height we don't have a height class yeah um it would be ridiculous in fact to restrict sports based on heights we would never do that um if we look at women's nba we see that there are I mean, Brittany griner right is seven feet tall there aren't there are like probably like four seven feet tall trans women in all of america do it for weight in the case of so in the case of um combat sports i don't think so in the case of football it would be the reason is not in the case of combat sports um i think that there is a huge reason to want the safety aspect there because we don't want the competitors to die wait a minute the safety aspect do you think uh there's a bit of a safety aspect when it comes to trans women in women's mma in the case of women's mma i think even long term like 100 years from now um it makes sense for us to have like call them endocrine classes or something right so i think this is perfectly fine for safety concerns wait endocrine classes he oh, means wow. hormones hormones well, mm -hmm. specifically having a hormone the, class where it's like, OK, this is this. Yeah. And nanogram per decibel. This isn't a hormone. Class. Well, you're, you're a little bit you're a little bit mistaken. Endocrine is not just um, it's not just hormones. Right? Endocrine is the manifestation of hormones. It's not the hormones themselves. Um, so what we'd want to do is we'd probably want to make sure that people are for a certain period of time at a certain range of hormone levels uh, to be in a certain hormone uh, like endocrine class or something. Um, I think this would because of this um it sort of like gives us a more implicit or a more specific and i think implicit as probably a fine word to use here justification for the you're doing this like like smug like rubbing your head thing or whatever i don't know what the point is i don't i don't think my arguments wrong I literally rubbed my head once <laughs> i don't know you keep doing like a smug exasperated thing so you don't see no no it's fine it's fine it's fine it's fine um the it's you come on obviously i don't all right uh the when it comes to this idea right that we should have like like Wants to let the standard. I'm. Well, I'd love to finish the sentence. Oh my God, he's so. Up calm down. Calm down. I. I'm not upset. What are you talking about? I'm perfectly calm. The nuance, bro. I'm just like, when it comes to the combat sports argument, right? So there's a difference between this sports and all the other ones because in this one, people punch each other in the head and they could die. In the other ones, punching people in the head is usually just permitted. Obviously, there are some that are riskier than others, right? Like football or whatever. 
but we still want safety concerns. Because we don't, no, 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 we don't want the competitors to die. Between trans women and biological women, which is what you were arguing earlier. You were arguing there's there is more similarity between trans women and biological women than there is between you know, men and women, so they should be able to- That would be true. Sports categories, but well, that's then you're why saying, he gets around let's make an exception for- classes. Yeah, no, let's you're... make an exception for MMA? For the sake of not killing people, yes. So there are a significant enough differences in certain sports for you? Not for the sake of fairness. The point is to not kill the competitors. They're already <laughs> not- We don't want them to die. But They're if already one competitor not killing is capable they are killing each other in MMA. There are cases where people have died in MMA. Yeah, just how, based how many on people their biology died alone. In the UFC? Wait, 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 no, no. The UFC specifically. Wait, wait, guys, this is a really important point. If there is a sport where one group of people mm -hmm. are literally afraid they are going to murder the other group of people because they are so much stronger, why would that advantage not exist in other sports to a significant degree? I think. Why would we not consider that advantage and maybe keep those people out of other sports as well? Lauren, do you want weight classes in football? No, no, no. We're talking about gender here. Yeah, do you want weight classes in football? I, I don't know. I'm not a sports expert. We're talking about gender. Do you want weight classes in any sports other than MMA? I don't, I, what, we'll how is that relevant? Then. Tell me, tell me. How <laughs> that's true. That's a good point. <laughs> um, so it's relevant because you, the, the point is in this sport specifically, this very specific sport, we want weight classes for the same reason we want endocrine classes because we don't want the competitors to die. So we don't think it's very likely they'll die, but any risk is not one that we really want to take here because they punch each other in the head but and people die. But if they're the for, same uh, weight Olympic class. Weightlifting. If they're the same weight class and one group can... This is also... Uh, ironically, nuance, bro. This is also to keep people from dying. <laughs> so it's just... It's to keep people from dying because... Yeah, it is. It is. Wait, yes, 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 yes. It's not because they're punching each other in the head. People yes. Dying? Yes. Yeah. What are you talking about? Yes. So if you're really, really, really heavy, it's easier for you to do powerlifting. That's why the powerlifters are all big, fat guys. If you've ever seen them, they're big, fat guys. Because it's really, really easy to lift a weight if you're really, really heavy versus if you're really, really light, right? And so, if we just Wait, let them do whatever they want, in football. In, I, I'm not sure what you're talking about here. Um, in the case of the specifically the powerlifting point, right? If we let people be really, really Olympic weightlifting, not powerlifting, but go ahead. In the case of Olympic weight, I'm not sure what the distinction here is. Um, in the case of Olympic, hold, just, yeah, hold on, just, uh, listen to my argument. You might you might realize the distinction might not be important in this context. So the Olympic weightlifting, um, people who are trying to lift as much as they can using their bodies, if they're really, really, really heavy. It's easier for them to lift large weights. And if you're really, really, really heavy, you also are going to die of a bunch of heart related diseases. So I think that's a good reason to have these weight classes here. But people get big and heavy to lift heavier weight anyways, regardless of weight <laughs> classes. What are you talking about? They get big and heavy to lift heavier weights. But... <laughs> man, because they want to find out who's the world's strongest man. Correct. And it's unhealthy and they die earlier because of it. Well, they're, they, they're also like six foot nine and they're going to be bigger anyway. Like they can't really control that, but um, they die earlier anyways. They, they have weight classes because it's like, look, we already know bigger people are going to lift heavier weights. If you want to be a, you know, if you want to be competitive in a certain weight class, then we allow that for you because, it, you know, they, pe they want more people to compete. It's not to stop people from dying because they think some guy who's like five foot four is going to try to put on 400 pounds to deadlift more weight. So it is in fact the case that if we allow people to just not have weight classes, they will in fact put on more weight, not compete within their weight class, um, and thus they'll end up dying of an earlier age. The examples you gave of sports that, that are similar to this sport but don't have the weight classes are ones where people die really early. An example of a combat sport um, where there are sometimes weight classes and sometimes not depending on where you are um, would be like um, would be sumo, right? That's a combat sport. Um, there's sometimes a weight class depending on where you are and sometimes not in the places where there isn't. You see people dying in that field of a bunch of heart-related diseases because of the fact that they weigh incredible weights. They're like humongous, like planet-sized individuals. So that's the reason why in combat sports it makes sense to have these weight classes. Now that we're done with that tangent, the reason we have these endocrine classes is because we don't want people to die. So I think point made. So I think the uh, hormone like endocrine classes would... Well, actually, before I, before I go on this... Um rant would you want every sport to be 
dictated by hormone or endocrine classes, why wouldn't that make sense? As it exists now, as it stands now, I think that's what they currently do. Okay. So, so what you mean by that? Wait, elaborate on that, actually. In the status quo, that's fine, as I think what he's trying to say. Yeah, they already do that. As in splitting men and women sports? They do that by endocrine classes? Is that what you're saying? For, I think yeah, for trans people, yes. That's how they do it right now, um, but yeah, there's and endocrine classes would be more specific and better. It's yeah, currently they do it by hormone. They do it by hormone over a period of time, which ends up being like analogous to endocrine classes. Um, the issue is they only do it for trans people, right? And so what we see because of this is we see a huge biasing in the top levels of these elite sports um, towards uh, women who are intersex, right? Towards women who have like naturally way higher testosterone levels, right? Than name than than like the bias you'd see in a trans woman. Um, if you want to worry about like pushing the rest of women out that's an example there was like an olympic runner who had really high testosterone levels naturally and she wasn't allowed to compete if i recall correctly you think that's sad i, I can't remember what their name was but i i can look it up if you want but i thought and you think really, it's yeah i think that was that's ridiculous that's why i don't really want this to be based on you know endocrine levels i'd like a woman who naturally produces a lot of testosterone to be able to dominate in her field doesn't she have a out. me too doesn't she have a, that? That's interesting. That's interesting. Doesn't she have a biological advantage like that, though? Sure, there are some biological advantages that uh, exist within certain groups. Some, a man who is super tall is going to have a biological advantage against other men. Huh. But the biological huh. differences between men as a whole and women as a whole are so extreme to the point where we literally have different body parts that it doesn't make sense to. It's not just like, you know, I've, I've trained a lot and had a bit of height extra, you know, it's, it's like, it's a lot like you have broader shoulders. Yeah. It's a lot like if you, it's a lot like if you had like naturally way higher testosterone, than the norm. Like if your testosterone was way higher, like from the womb. <laughs> testosterone being higher is a lot different than literally having different body parts, right? Different bone structure. Why, well, why do you, how do you think the bones are formed? You know, women, women's center of gravity is literally different than men's, just based on our body being developed so, for <laughs> babies. Like, the reason for that is because of the influence of, the reason for that is because of the influence of hormones. Yeah, at, you know, both birth, when you're developing in the womb, there is a, you know, spout of hormones that change the biology of a child, and then through puberty. And it becomes such an extreme difference between men and women that, to some degree... You know, we we have to separate it for it to be fair in sports. And I okay, <laughs> you think that these arguments? You guys Sorry, guys hold on, nuance, bro. Don't do the ping ponging thing. What are you fucking? Don't do the. Grab? He's so mad. Meltdown. Meltdown. You've been just talking. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on, you're just fli he's flipping out. Holy shit. Okay, he's having a little bit of a meltdown. I just want to be able to. I just want to be able to. Cucumber this whole time. I want to just hold on. I just want to be able to address the argument. Bro. Nuance Pro, relax. <laughs> no, just a second. Okay, I want to be able to address Lauren's argument. I'll kick it back over to you, and then like you can say whatever you want, right? Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, take a deep breath. All right, it's okay. Um, in the case, in the case of the the argument you just made, right, about like there being a biological difference, right? You're saying there's there's this this this, this biological difference is too great. Do you think the biological difference between the biological difference between like people with wildly higher testosterone levels is going to be less significant than the biological advantage of say trans women who have like testosterone within the normal ranges it's not about that because it, it, you are talking about someone who is you know maybe an individual transgender you know male to female is going to be in the normal ranges of women right and maybe even their body they won't be able to compete maybe they'll compete at an average level but it's about opening up that pandora's box because once you've opened it and you've said okay you know you can enter so long as you identify as transgender that it, we're not just going to get someone who potentially falls into that category of average or normal you are going to get people that are extremely competitive and are way higher i i mean I, i'm sure so, for the example a million times where like serena williams wouldn't even compete in the top 200 men i think it's even top 400 men in tennis 
the exacerbated differences are so extreme that yes, while you may be able to find like an outlier here and there within the transgender community. You said it doesn't matter how extreme they are. It would compete very average compared to women. Once you open that Pandora's box, once you say women's sports are open to people who identify as this category, it is open to all of this whole group of humans that have this exceedingly high advantage, which is why you said the so when we look at like trans women, right? Um, or, or when we're looking at the the categorization and the the um, the distribution, sorry, that's the word I'm looking for. The reason that we're going to find like these outliers that are going to be so massively different is because we're going to be looking at the 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 far ends of the men and women spectrum. But when we're looking at like just trans women, right? This is going to be a very very small section that are going to be the percent that have gender dysphoria. If your argument is that people are going to start transitioning for this purpose. Uh, that seems unlikely given that gender dysphoria is, uh, that, that it, once you transition, if you don't have gender dysphoria before you transition, there seems to be a significant uh, possibility of developing gender dysphoria after you transition. And we know that things like depression and anxiety can um, can worsen sports performance. So uh, these things are going to have um, a pretty negative effect on that, plus the the 41% suicidality thing. Um, if, uh, if they're, excuse me, uh, like transitioning for that purpose. Uh, I mean, it's it's an it's a true statement, right? It's like bad to bring up if you're trying to harass trans people with it, but it's not like bad to bring up as a as a recognition of like this is a, a really bad mental disorder that like damages people. Um, otherwise, when we're looking at like 0.1 percent of men, we're very unlikely to see like the far ends of the distribution. Of course, the larger the sample size you're going to get, the larger the the higher the outliers are going to be. Um, uh, obviously, it's going to follow normal distribution pretty normally, but if it's only 0.1% um, of the population, like since said earlier, there's probably four trans women who are um, as tall as some of the some of the women in the WNBA um, in the entire country. The, the, the level saying, at which we're like I, was... I, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. There are there are differences between you know when people decide to identify as trans or come out as trans or whatever. They tend to be of a certain subcategory of people that already have you know certain psychology biology differences and this tends that's to make them not my similar to women i'm not even addressing the you argument what you're saying in the in this you don't that can i can i rephrase it so that it makes sport, like can i make it more concise see, it's more average all right go quick average because apparently i just didn't get it what happened to okay yeah so to you nuance bro what happened to that lie well ask lauren about that it's not my fault i just wanted to make that no but sh shouldn't we move on to the uh <laughs> <don't> <laughs> topic we were so yeah so true so true i do want to finish my thoughts funny. there though because okay. I, I if you are saying there are some differences some manipulation that could be made with hormones to make it kind of fair between trans women and women i'm just assuming that's kind of what you've said um as fair it, as sports ever are i guess sure okay yeah there we go um it it doesn't matter to me because I don't see any reality in which progressive progressivism or this progressive push forward ever stops and ever regulates itself. The definition of what is transgender and who can be transgender, who can identify with any group, every year continues to grow and grow and grow to the point where it's like, no, you don't have to. If you think even someone should do social transition if you think someone should have to grow their hair out and put on makeup to identify as a woman you're now bigoted because people shouldn't have to do anything there should be no effort there should be no hormones so this category of what people consider transgender just keeps expanding and i also know a lot of the progressives who are pushing for this are also gender abolitionists altogether and like you said on your 100 year goal it's to have no sports categories at all so either way I think that this is literally just opening Pandora's box to something that is going to destroy women's spaces and women's sports, undeniably, based on what you have described to me and based what I've based on what I've heard from progressives over the last ten years. Um, on the categorization of trans thing, the reason that a lot of people will say that you shouldn't have to like meet any X Y Z criteria to be trans is um. Mostly just because not gatekeeping it while people are exploring what their gender identity might be seems to have good societal consequences long term. Um, whether somebody right, well, is it, actually no gatekeep, sorry. whether there's somebody is actually trans, um, I, I would still say uh, it, it is almost always going to be determined on like um, gender dysphoria. Right? There's there's almost no reason for somebody to like 
go through a full transition unless they have gender dysphoria. Um, but uh, it that even it it's it's still better. It produces better consequences to let people explore and um, not force them to uh, to identify any which certain way and um, and let them uh, explore certain labels and identities while they're figuring shit out. Okay, all right. Um, yeah, let's let's move on to the uh, uh, DeSantis bill in Florida. I will once again start with our progressive friends here. You know what? We started with synth last, so let's start with phenomics. What are your thoughts on the trans, um, uh, don't, they, they, or the don't say gay bill, but the right are calling it the anti-groomer bill. There's two names for it. It's actually just keeping uh, family safety, I think. family. Uh, what, what is the it's HR 1151, right? Yeah, 1151. H1557. But One, five, it's five, like pro six. protecting parental rights, I, I think, is is uh, in the name of the bill there. But what are your thoughts on that, Phenomics? Sure. So I think uh, 1557 is broadly pretty bad. Um, I think that uh, there are parts of the bill that are defensible, but it's, but the the number there's also a lot of parts that are indefensible. The the number one issue I take is with the uh, the sexual orientation and gender identity instruction line, uh, the part where that's banned. I think there's a lot of problems with this. Um, the easy example that's been brought up a lot is uh, what if a kid has two gay parents? How do you explain that? What if a kid's getting picked on for having two gay parents? Can a teacher get involved? Uh, another really good example is uh, a teacher who has a husband, for example, a male teacher who has a husband, are they allowed to tell their students who that husband is? How much are they allowed to instruct on that? Um, it, it seems like the the language of the bill is pretty broad and sweeping. So um, should it be interpreted that way, it uh, it uh, it could have a lot of problems. And I, I don't see like a, a good way of interpreting it that's like logically consistent and doesn't have a lot of problems. Okay, uh, nuanced pro at last. <laughs> Yeah, um, it generally seems like a good bill. I think there are some areas where you'd want clarification so that it's not like, you know, you don't want it to run into being unconstitutionally vague, which is how a lot of laws like this would get struck down in the courts. Um, kind of like what uh, Phenomics was referring to, there could be some issues there. But generally speaking, it involves parental rights. I think that's important. It allow it, it actually creates a lot of... Um, specific timeline saying well you can file this here and they have to respond within 30 days and then seven days after this they have to do this and you know i i like a lot of those things um i like that it gets parents involved uh with their kids lives a lot more and allows more transparency um and you know i don't think there's really much reason to you know teach sexual orientation or gender identity to kindergartners through uh you know third graders so um and then the uh, grades after that has to be age appropriate so i'm uh generally in favor of the bill age appropriate is also a pretty vague um yeah that's term. what i was talking about with constitutional vagueness all right synth Sure. Yeah. Uh, no, I think the argument that is unconstitutional is just like objectively true. It's almost inarguable. Um, the a restriction on speech like that that's that encompassing is just like it's there's just not really, I think, a um, a strong argument um, in, in favor of something like that. I think it, so it restricts K to third grade um, blanket across the board to discuss uh, many matters that are involving sexual orientation or gender identity. Um, there is, yeah, the um, level of like it's so vague that it's unconstitutional. I think there's like a Vox article about that or something. Um, the the argument here, right, um, in the case of the specific, like, um, the, the specific bill here, HB 1557, um, I think it's, I think if you want to restrict the ability for teachers to, um, for teachers to communicate with their kids about sexual orientation, um, what you end up doing is you, um, I, I can understand the anti-groomer aspect of that, but then there's, like, it's just, it just doesn't really hold water, given, like, what if, I got, like, a kid has gay parents or something that comes up in the classroom, are teachers just supposed to, like, stay silent on that? Um, the gender identity stuff is, I think, even worse because there's just nothing sex related to that, right? Like, you're just like nothing sexual related to that, I should say. Um, it's just like it's it's unironically like an insane, indefensible bill. I have no idea how the um, how somebody's gonna like like push back against it or push back against the criticisms of it. Okay, so I, I'd like to think that ninety percent of the bill is not controversial with people here in the sense of what it's trying to do. Beyond obviously, there's going to be that. Uh, dissent between us on the gender stuff. But for me, the majority of it just talking about 
parents need to be informed when any medical decisions are being made for kids, when any uh, psychological tests are being done on kids. Fantastic. Amazing. Whenever there's decisions um, or, or schools cannot put in a policy that a teacher can tell kids not to go home and tell their parents. They can't create a, a you know, test or a quiz that says, don't tell your parents about that. I think that is fantastic, especially when it comes to anti-grooming. You can't have a teacher tell a kid, don't tell your parents this. I think that is a, a fantastic bill. I can't imagine why this stuff wasn't already, you know, discussed. Maybe it has already been put in place by school boards, but, you know, as, as one of the only parents in this conversation, definitely something I would want uh, at any school I sent my child to. Now, when it comes to the sex and gender identity stuff, I don't have a problem with that. I think that that is generally, even when it comes to hetero relationships, don't see any point talking to kids about it when they're, what, this is talking about like six, five, four-year-olds to nine-year-olds, I think it was. We're not even getting it, like what, 10 is usually when you get the puberty talks in schools. We're not even getting into that area. And this isn't even restricting puberty talks for that matter. So I don't even think kids can conceptualize sex, what the idea of it, the purposes, all of these things at those ages. And I don't think we should try to force it on them, push it on them, whether it be hetero or homosexual, doesn't matter to me at that age. It's not relevant to them. It's yeah, it's not, it's not sex. It's sexual orientation in general. And it's also gender identity, right? So yeah, yeah I think it's, so you, there's no way that you actually think that we should never talk to kids about heterosexual relationships. When did I, I, I never said we should never talk to them about heterosexual relationships. You said, you said even in hetero relationships, you did verbatim say that. So even are you... In hetero relationships, when talking about, so sexual orientation, right? And gender identity. Are you okay with talking about romantic orientation? But you, you know, perhaps that's a different conversation, romantic orientation. But even then, I don't know. No, it's not. <laughs> would discuss that with the students. Beyond if it's in a book, right? Beyond if it's in something. If it's in a or book or something that's showing, happening right? in real life, or like history, or a lot of things that are taught in school. Because sometimes teachers are like, "Hey, me and my um, me and my spouse just got married." Because it just comes up. It's like, yeah, yeah, that's we should ban that if they're gay. Yeah, probably don't have teachers talk about their personal lives in a math class. Uh, just have what? Teach material. In my opinion, that I didn't know seems shit about, insane. No, listen, I didn't know really shit about my teacher's personal life <laughs> going through school. And, uh, you know, if you saw yeah, it shows. At school, it was weird. It was really I think that's strange. actually probably the safer take. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah math, that's teach them science. And, uh, you know, it's not your job. You never, teacher. ever I'm want the teacher to, them, to uh, create a bond with a student. Yeah, do you, stop, do you have any trying, idea how good yeah, teaching stop, outcomes are created? I'm trying to talk to you know, kids about how you and your boyfriend watched a Netflix show last night. Teach them to. Do you two. think that there might be any advantage in an educational sense to having a having a relationship with? There's advantages and there's disadvantages, and I think in the current environment, it's probably best to just stick to the material. Hey, Miss. Yeah. Hey, Mrs. Is... Your personal life and your you know school life. I want you to. You can talk about Tigger or something instead of Whoa. the threesome you had on the weekend, right? You don't have to Nobody's talk talking about, about sex, right? I, I, nothing I, sex related. Be talking about to children about sex. R. You can wow. you can tell them about uh, yeah, you can talk to a 5-year-old about whatever, you know, Cars movie just came out instead of uh, yeah, the the Tinder dates you went on on the weekend. So it's it, not to do with sex, right? Yeah, yeah. hold on. I, yeah, Lauren, slow down. You're talking about you just guess galloping. Actual amount of Tinder dates they went on. Shut the. <laughs> with the debate bro terms. I hate. Oh, gish malding. You're gish galloping. Holy shit. Yeah. So everything you said so far has been untrue. You're just trying to like filibuster and fill out the airtime. And sorry, debate bro term. Um, the in the case of the claims you just made about this, like everything I just said. Yeah. Untrue. Almost all of it. Yes. I'm about to explain to you. Yeah. I that was untrue. Sure, that it's was not the. I am about to tell you. I'm about to tell you why the things you're saying are completely untrue. the the things you're saying that are in regards to the bill are in wild misrepresentation of the bill. So, in the case of the in the case of the bill itself, if you if the teacher if the teacher comes to to school one day and the kids ask like, "Hey, Mrs. Mrs. Southern, why weren't you at school yesterday? Why was the, why do we have a substitute? And you were getting married or something?" What you have to say, according to your rule, is. Uh, sorry, I can't tell you how the extra house bill that bans hetero relationship talk is complete. It, it makes it off limits for me to mention to you what I was doing when I was getting married. 
Like this isn't this is ridiculous. This is like a, the, the most insane shit. Yeah. Anyways, three times three. <laughs> yeah. If you're incredibly if you're incredibly grating and annoying to your kids and you never built any kind of social bond, that's yeah. really reasonable. With an answer to that question, that's so difficult. I, I would honestly, I'd prefer, yeah, they just not talk about their personal lives. But if you want to say you get married, I don't think there's any reason to have to go into, hey, I got married. And by the way, I am attracted to my partner because of this trait, that trait, and this trait. And this is what this uh, sexual relationship or a sexual attraction with my so, partner okay, is. Wait. Did you not read the bill? We, well, you know, let's I, just I do a really, married, really basic like, scenario, right? Let's do a really, really basic scenario. You say, I got married. Your kid, because you're Miss Southern, right? Your kid says, who's the husband? And you have to say, uh, I can't tell you who I married, but it's not that. But I can't tell you Don't why, because I can't explain married. how why, sexual Why do you have to get into that? Don't worry about it. <laughs> get, get into their times tables. Never, ever talk about your... Yeah, this is like, this is ridiculous. I guess we'll just... Yeah, I don't I don't want teachers talking to my kids about their personal life, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so... Hey, just really quick, when you said 90%, when you said 90% of the, the bill has nothing to do with the gender stuff, did you, have you read the bill? I have read the bill. I did a whole video on it. Like, you read, you read the entire bill and you think 90% of it has nothing to do with gender. The entire five pages seven, with the two. Seven. It's seven. It's seven. It's seven. Yeah. yeah. Shit. Well, yeah, it's, it's, it's five pages. Uh -huh. Like the actual language of the bill. And two Whoa. pages like of a. I'm, Incredible. I, I know I Incredible. Know, but I did make it. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Slow down. Sure. Yeah. yeah. All seven pages, and you think 90% of it has nothing to do with the gender shit? Yes. There's one section that's one sentence that says sexual orientation. In fact, sexual no. orientation and no. is only mentioned in one sentence. No, it is not. You are wrong. No. No. Okay, elaborate. Where am I wrong? Yeah, it's, it's, so it's firstly, it's on line 22, right? And it's also on line 98. So it's in the summary, and then the it's summary. in the bill. <laughs> so it's mentioned twice in the bill. I'm so, wait, hold on. No, 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 no. You're so telling me you... Once. It's mentioned twice in a... It's mentioned twice. It's mentioned oh my god. And it's it's Holy shit. Okay. So you're, you think there's, there's, you think that it's within the scope of like reasonable legality. Are you familiar with the idea of what like a, um, what like a, like a prior restraint is? Just for the record, yes, it was it's mentioned First once, Amendment yes, uh, jurisprudence. Lauren, Lauren, are you familiar with the idea of a prior restraint? Elaborate. It's a first okay. thing. It restricts you before you do it. Yeah. So in most cases of prior restraint, we both agree, right? Most of those are going to be wildly unconstitutional. This falls under prior restraint. <laughs> no, it's not the same thing. You're talking. It about is prior restraint. You're talking about school curriculum for children. They have a, a large amount of latitude to control what that is. It absolutely is the case. This falls under prior restraint. Prior. So anytime you prohibit speech before the speech happens, that'd be an example of prior restraint. This absolutely does that. Prior restraints unconstitutional. I just told you that there's not all of it's that unconstitutional. You have to give a reason, a justification. The burden is on you to prove the reason on you. The, you mean the three types? Corner Lauren on prior restraint. Do you know the three factors that are involved in that? Sure. Are you asking the three types of ways in which prior restraint can be like um, allowed or restricted? Right. Are, like, are you talking about like, like um, in the case of like the licensed speech or like um, judicial injunction or like the... Um, a outright prohibition of speech? Is this what you're talking about with the three types? Types of restrictions. What do they usually say? Are those what you were saying? Those three types that I just mentioned? No, it's called time, place, and manner restrictions. You would be talking about the types I just talked to, that I just mentioned then. Yeah, it's called time, place, and manner. Okay, so I got it right. Nice. When, when you're uh, moving on. <laughs> in schools and the curriculum, that shit's allowed. Like, you have a large amount of latitude, the legislature, the and parents, to control the curriculum in the classroom and what's talked about. Okay. It deals with prior the restraint. Teachers should be allowed to say the n-word in class, otherwise it's prior restraint. I like. <laughs> no, 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 no. There's a what? big diff. There's a wild difference between legally prohibiting teachers from blasting ends in the classroom and saying something like, "Hey, if you blast ends, you'll be fired." You can't. You can't arrest a teacher for saying the n-word. Right, right. You you could fire them though. Yeah, you can't arrest them. You can't prosecute yeah, them for we're it. We're not talking about arresting anybody here. This is a house oh, bill. That's what the bill does. It, wait, where, where's the criminal section in the bill? There's not a criminal section in the bill. The bill prohibits things on a legal basis. These are legal restraints. These are not firing teachers. We Hold on. You, wait, wait, we just talked about, you said, it, 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 when I brought up arrests, you said that's in the bill. 
Where is it in the bill that they arrest the teachers for this? So at the bill right now. So the the bill itself does not specify an arrest, right? The bill itself does not legally specify arrest. The bill is a legal bill. I'm aware. The bill itself is, however, is however law. It's law, and thus the First Amendment applies to it. It does not apply to employment. After every time we like make something illegal, now we have to write, "You will be arrested if you break the law." Under it, in like little crayon. From from my understanding, like government agents in general, people who work for the government don't have full free speech. There are plenty of restrictions on their speech in every aspect of government jobs. Like, am I wrong there? Or can you know people that work for the government just say whatever the hell they want, whenever they want, while working? I think that the only legal restrictions are going to be like whistleblower, sorry, not whistleblower, um, like sensitive information restrictions, right? Like security restrictions. Um, other than that, I think that it's all just, uh, if you could find so me a lot of this otherwise, in I'm cases, pretty sure that it's can just... be, In some cases, for the sake of being able to do one's job in a safe environment, they can put restrictions in a workplace, even a government workplace. Like In the case like, where you'd be like, prosecuted for treason? Like, like classified information, yeah. Right. What about the other portions of the bill? Are you, do you guys support the aspect when it involves like the, the health screening or the wellness screening of children? Uh, do you support the, uh, them like notifying parents about that and parents having the right to consent or not? Consent? I think you guys are trying to move away from the weakest aspect of the bill and like move to ones that you think you can defend better than that one. Um, I am trying to focus on the weakest aspect of the bill. You've caught me. Can you, can you Whoops. Just, you, you, you could even do a quick yes or no if you it, want yeah. to. Like, I think we're allowed to ask about the bill. In before we move on to that, can we talk about can we talk about the specific line we were on before you guys pivot away? We can get back to it. How about that? Yeah, he just wants a quick yes or no, and then we'll go back right on. Sure. A uh, quick yes or no. Yeah, I disagree with the other aspects of the bill as well. Um, so in the case of the in the case of this restriction on speech, it is not that interesting. Um, in the case of the restrict, okay. In the case of the specific restrictions on speech here, I think these are wildly ridiculous restrictions that are completely impractical. The arguments you've given so far have been like biting some of the most absurd bullets. Like a teacher should never be able to talk about like marriage in the classroom. Um, or like teachers should never be able to be able to talk like about gender identity. Like like I if a teacher walks into a classroom, what even qualifies as talking about gender identity? Like if if, if you say like I am a girl or like I am a boy, is that talking about gender identity? Sure. So that's not exact so or, wait, did you just pivot back to the point or you, that was with respect it's not to my point? There's no such thing as pivoting back to a point. I'm staying on the point. Oh that's the opposite of pivoting. Pivot is. Point brought up. Did you go away from that back to what you we said were we could just about? go back? You just said we could go back. Lauren said. <laughs> Lauren, I'm gonna I'm gonna make it really clear to you. I'm gonna make it really clear. Lauren was like out loud saying like just a quick yes or no, and then I gave a quick yes or no, and I talked about the point. If you could just say yeah, that's what I'm doing. I'm like oh okay. I Did you just ignore what I just said? He, he, he is going back point. to the previous topic. Um, I'm staying on topic. You caught me. I'm staying on topic. Yeah, well, I was tricky to debate bro tactic of staying on topic. And this is an aspect of the bill. I was asking if you support that aspect of the bill. Let's go down the logic of one line at a time, and then you can pivot to wherever you want. I don't understand why you're saying no. No, we can really easily get into it, right? We're, we're gonna, if you really want to, we can talk about that. But, the, Wait, but we, we want to go down, is this line, we, what we want to go down, what we want to go down first is we want to go down this line where we have plenty of time to talk about that, right? I don't think- I mean, we already Yeah, okay, we did. can, we can how, keep how much, going down, can we can we keep going it? down this, this sexual orientation and identity thing, but I think there are some big pieces of just bullshit that have been put out there that need to be- <laughs> corrected like which the fact pieces? that this bill is civil not criminal this is a super chat i got from someone which is very relevant and nuance bro tried to make this point so if teachers violate it then that is potential grounds for termination and suit People can be sued but not teachers getting arrested for saying "Ooh, i got married this weekend like that's not gonna happen and and portraying it that way is a complete fabrication on your end so i just want to put that put that out there you have the floor now. Sure. Um, so in the case of the specific bill here, the classroom instruction aspect of it in which you are, um, the specific text of the bill is from 97 and 101. Classroom instruction by school personnel or third parties on sexual orientation or gender identity may not occur, blanket ban effectively, um, in kindergarten through grade three or, so outside of that context of kindergarten through, uh, outside of K through three, it's um, in a manner that is not age appropriate or developmentally appropriate for students in accordance with state standards. This is so incredibly ambiguous 
that could, it could apply to so many things. I don't think either of you could really address the point that I just made earlier, which is in regards to these like what is not um like what qualifies as like about gender identity is like saying you're a man or a woman about gender identity. I would agree that there is ambiguity, and that's probably a problem in the writing of the bill. But what I'm more I'm I'm less interested in talking about where potential ambiguity could be. Uh, than I am on our actual personal moral values around the subjects this bill surrounds. Like, do you think in general, aside from the bill, do you think that kids in kindergarten should be being taught about sex? About Nobody sex? Wants to teach them about sex. Nobody wants to teach them about sex. They're not. They're not having sex ed in K through three. Okay, so would you, you don't. Want that, to that, teach that, them would you about wouldn't gender want that. Identity? Wait, wait. No. We, all, we just said no. No, we absolutely. We already no. do teach them about wait, gender so identity. You guys disagree. Je no, 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 no. We're saying no and yes to different questions. So you asked a different question, Nuance Bro, than Lauren did. The question I was saying no to uh, was we don't already teach about those, or we don't already teach about um, sex. We don't teach the K through tells through K through three sex. And the thing that yeah, and the thing that phonomics was saying yes to was gender identity, right? In the case of gender identity, we already do teach about this. It's impo it's impossible not to. Boys all the time in kindergarten through third that's, grade. That's, that's like sex, a... though. No, no. Yes. So you think we teach? A... So you think we teach about sex? No, no we don't teach about sex, sex, sex and female sex. No, yeah. no, I don't think we teach about penises and vagina in K through three. I could He's be wrong. About I... that. No, you don't. That's what sex have... is, though, right? No, those are those are body parts. That's not what yes. sex. So what is sex? Saying sex as in the two sexes. Yeah, what are, what are those? Mm, that's bimodal distribution of sex. Okay, what do you, how do you decide if somebody's male or female nuance, bro? Uh, we know based on those uh, sexual characteristics and their chromosomes. Like body parts? It's chromosomes? Wait, hold on. Like body parts? The body parts can inform if someone's male or, huh. I mean, sorry, male or female, but that doesn't mean... Body parts are sex. You understand the distinction there, right? The distinction that you're making is that body parts are all that decides sex. It's a bunch of different body parts. That and chromosomes. That's a body part. Allosome body part. Allosomes would be a body part. Hold, hold on. Chromosomes are a body part? You, you would do you think they outside of your body? Where do you think they are, Nuance Pro? That is like unbelievably yeah. bad faith. That is like Sorry, I don't want to hear bad faith accusations. I don't want to hear bad faith accusations from either of you at this point. You know when he says body part, you know, we're talking about limbs and shit. Not, well, you know, the atom. Uh-huh. Like, the, the air in sure. your body. The You know, the water is in your body, so it is a body part. Like, shh. Unbelievable. Unbelievable bad faith. Yeah. It's not semantics. You, it's no. all that makes up. He made, he made <laughs> the the body say, part. Like, my my he body part. S, right? He said with an S girl. <laughs> he was talking about body parts. When we were talking about body parts, body parts do determine sex. That was a ridiculous claim to make. So we were countering the specific claim made. Yeah, I've never heard of chromosomes described as a body part. That's hey, nuance, bro. Where are they? Part. Which which part of the body on a woman are you most attracted to? It's it's the atoms for me on a man. I love that oh, body. Wow. We're the ones being bad faith here, by the way. The people who have, the people who've addressed zero arguments so far, are, are accusing the other people of being like. Ooh, I love it when it's. A say again. Jar. Say again. <laughs> okay. So back to the actual contention, like uh, accusing us of being bad faith and like addressing none of our arguments here. Um, the actual contention, the actual like bill we're talking about. If we say that like. The bill includes the idea, like, you said it's ambiguous and you want to talk about the moral principles. For you, when you say gender identity, what do you mean? What are you referring to? What are we banning talking about? You're, if you want to sit there and talk about this is how I identify as a female, this is how I identify as a male, this is how... Like, when they talk about gender identity, they are clearly talking about the idea that you can, like, decide and shift your gender identity and how you express that. I I don't think these are conversations. Kids are still trying to figure out the gender they were born with when they're like six, seven, let alone the idea that you could potentially shift this. I, I don't think these are conversations that kindergarten children can even conceptualize. So your, de your definition is just talking about transgender people then, right? That's one aspect of it for sure. Like it's undeniable that aspect, this is then? referring to people that can potentially shift their gender identity.
So what what is what's the rest of it then? Because that's the only thing you just described. Um, and, and on the on, and on the fact of like children not being able to know, it does seem that there's a lot of factors that um a lot that trans people at a very very young age can um be aware of their gender and be accurate for uh, you, you for can long you can term. be aware of a lot of things at, at a certain age, but your ability to process them properly and in a decision making manner, like our decision our decision making skills as humans are not fully developed until we are twenty five years old. And the gap between someone in high school, sure, per se, and which is why the the detransition extreme. rate for children is going to be a little bit higher than the detransition rate for uh, people who transition as adults. But it's still all of it's going to be well below one percent, right? It's still all going to be like in the the you point. You just say the detrans rate for children is less than one percent. You're not going to have yeah, it's absolutely. Trans. It's if, actually if are, it's no, 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 uh, no, no, the detrans no, no, rate in general is one in three thousand. Uh, the detrans rate for children, I think, is close no, to point one. Is, I can I can find this you. This is a completely untrue. Easily. This is completely untrue because what you are referring to as detrans, you are talking about people who are you know physically changing into the other gender, which is a very minute percentage of children. Now, when we talk about children who think they are transgender and then decide they're not anymore, that rate is extremely high. After you're talking three, about. You're talking about the the rates that are generally, yeah, I know the study you're referring to. I'm assuming you're talking about the, um, so children who think they are transgender and then decide they're not after puberty is extremely high. Can you, the only study I've seen, which shows, uh, the the numbers that I'm assuming you're going to say, which is, which are going to be the high numbers of rates of detransition include children who went to gender clinics for gender nonconformity, not children who, um, who, uh, who actually identified as the other gender. That's what I'm saying. Um, I'm saying when you say it's one percent, you're referring to this. So you're like, you're just now. talking about anybody who's referred to a gender clinic for gender nonconformity, so regardless of how the child, child thinks they identify. Gender. Any no 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 not young kids who have questions about their gender gender who young kids who are gender nonconforming who their parents refer them to a gender clinic. Okay, so that's even more extreme. Than, yeah. Okay, so yeah, those kids tend to desist after um, after puberty. Yeah. What do you think gender nonconforming means? Like literally the, like, not that they identify as gender nonconforming as in they like play with boys toys if they're a girl or, or if they, if they were, uh, if they're AFAB or whatever. So you're saying they go to a gender clinic because they picked up a truck? I don't think that's what the uh, that's, study that's, was referring to. No, okay, we can look at it, right? Truck, like, it, no. It'll be, typically parents no are going to see no more parent, signs than no that, parent, but it's all going to be parents, no right? Parent no, no kid. child to a gender clinic because they decided to play with the other kids toys. Like so I was like being just... a little bit, I was being a little bit hyperbolic to make a point. Obviously it's not going to be literally like one instance of them playing with another kid's toys, right? It's usually going to be persistent um, actions that are going to, that are going to match with the other gender. Um, but whether that just be like tomboyish behavior for a girl or whether that be um, something like, whether that be uh, like trying to wanting to be wear clothes of the other gender, whatever, they'll be referred to gender clinics by their parents. It doesn't matter how these kids identify. It's about their, the, the things that they do. Them experimenting at this age makes a ton of sense, right? The fact that they're going to be re- referred to gender clinics, that parents are going to see signs of transgenderism when kids don't know shit about gender and they're exploring everything makes a lot of sense that they would have that, very, that very referral. And it also makes sense that they would be desisted a lot. Should they don't do know the Katanji she... Brown Jackson thing where we get into the definitions of like what is a word. they're exploring. Sorry. <laughs> Lord, you don't you know gender is that, is that, no, no, no. Kids, are you guys going to define it doesn't matter to them that's kids don't know anything about gender it doesn't not. at that age it doesn't matter when it comes to actual sexual attraction and when it comes to like the gen specifically like you know a gender identity that i identify as this or that gender that stuff does not matter to kids and it's too much for them at that age like, it's just trans kids that. it does like, matter though right they're probably only that because they've been had this shit imposed on them I do you have you can... do you have any actual proof for that, or did you just make it up? Source. Yeah. Oh, yes. Considering, considering, <laughs> I, I didn't. Are these people serious? That, we are yeah, I'm. I'm sorry. We're the ones who are bad faith here. You caught us. If do you remember being seven years old? Do you remember ever thinking about like sexual attraction to me? Other- it's around you when you're okay, like so, six years old. When so hold on, ever, sexual what are you talking about? Again, like, stop moving the goalposts with the sexual attraction. They're, they're, they're in the same two. sentence. When we talk about sexual in the same, orientation and we talk about gender problems. identity. Oh, okay. Do you remember being six and seven and thinking you were a fucking lizard? Like that was all of us. Do you remember thinking you had superpowers? Do you remember thinking a kid's gender identity? Did you think you were a boy, Lauren? Can't discern. Of course, I thought I was a boy when I was a kid. Sometimes every kid thinks they are something that they're not. At 
all the time when they are a child. This is I why their opinion on this is not. <laughs> Nuance, bro, did you think you, when you were seven years old, did you ever think you were a girl? I don't, I don't, I don't remember all the things that I thought when I was seven, but I do remember I thought I had cancer because I heard about cancer a lot, and I was like, I must have cancer. Yeah, yeah, but did you think you were? Do you think you were a girl? I don't remember. I don't remember that much. You know what? If he to. heard that he could potentially be a girl, he probably would have thought about that too, yeah, because that's how kids' brains work. And denying that is crazy. Like, I know you guys just no like, bad faith of me to say they're probably I didn't have a ton of teachers like telling Listen. me about trans stuff and like you could be a girl you could be yeah. uh, non-binary like i didn't have that even though i grew up in san francisco it didn't really uh teachers didn't lauren i'm i'm gonna be honest with you i don't think most I, I i don't think most um most young girls ever think they're a boy when they're seven years old nuance bro i don't think a lot of young kids are like what would it be like they to be probably a boy or do a girl? Not. but they think that's not the same as that's not the same that's that's don't a very think. different <laughs> They don't what, think what, it in a why way do you that think the adults is think so those drastic thoughts drastic now between like the, the the Gen Zers identifying as LGBTQ at twenty point eight percent versus the older generation who lives in the same time period identifying at probably social epic acceptance for homosexuality which has been persistent throughout yeah, but, human but it's, culture it's since like the beginning right, of time right now and those older people live right now they were at the same they were time as these raised and had their sexual development occur at a time when it wasn't right. Yeah, and now we have mm -hmm. teachers like <laughs> exactly. basically grooming children in the, the the society. They're on TikTok and then they're really? talking about non-binary stuff. What do you mean? Where, where are so you getting you, this grooming just, thing? Wait, 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 wait. I want you to. Where's the grooming grooming claim? You uh, I think when you're holding grooming. gay pride parades in elementary schools, I think that's a problem. There's that's gay element. pride parades think, in elementary. Yes, school. there's a whole fucking video about it. Actually, in <laughs> that Texas, sounds really that, funny. Yeah. That sounds really funny to watch. So you think it's funny? You don't think it's a problem, is what you're saying? No, I, I, uh, I, questioning I, its existence now. So, it's funny. Well, let's slow down, bud. Got Phoenix? Yeah, I'm going too fast. Yeah, so, so the uh... no, 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 no. There's there's a really important <laughs> point that needs to be highlighted here. Uh huh. You guys said I was bad faith and ridiculous to suggest that kids were probably thinking they were transgender when they were in kindergarten now because they had been told about it by their teachers, and now you just admitted the reason there are probably more trans kids today I is said because they're being told LGBT, about it by their teachers. LGBT, LGBT plus kids, right? I think so, that uh that most that that a so lot of people have there? homosexual wait, attraction. Wait. No, what's yeah, the T so of the LGBT? I don't think that trans people have increased at that rate. I think that the, the trans people have only increased at the rate that... Um, or I, I don't think that trans people have increased at all. I think that um, trans people being out in public has increased. Um, but uh, And I think the same is probably true for homosexuality. So you, think, so you think there were a bunch of trans... You think it's natural for like 20.8% of the population to be LGBTQ. You think that's the... I think... That's the natural... If, if society... If we look at our... And all that, you think... If we look at our closest genetic relatives, bonobos, they're um all pansexual. If we look at like throughout human history, homosexual behavior has been really, really... I'm going really to do, do the, the, the head, head thing. Oh, right? oh man, the exasperated... Uh, oh. You know, it's all criticized me for it, you know? <laughs> okay. Um, no, like, yeah, I, I think that, uh, I, I don't think that, um, all humans or even most humans are necessarily going to have like a homosexual be uh, attraction, but I think that, um, that, that like pr uh, up to, up to like b somewhere between like 20 and half, 20 to 20 to 60 is probably uh, like How a reasonable bonobos guess. How are bonobos pansexual? How are bonobos pansexual? They, yes. they, they have sex with boy bonobos. They have sex with girl bonobos. They have sex with intersex bonobos. They just have sex. They just be bonoboing. So they're animals. No, not all animals are pansexual like bonobos. Bonobos just have a lot of sex. Maybe Lauren was asking, are bonobos animals? The an yes. Yes. <laughs> they're, they're a type of animal. Yeah, I'm not. Good faith discussions we're trying to have here. Well, I agree. Yeah, it's it's really difficult to like push through how much bad faith you guys throw out there, um, because you've you've yet to address any of our arguments. Yeah, I mean, I, I could say the same thing about you. You actually couldn't. Um, maybe you could possibly say it. I'd right? just be wrong. <laughs> Who'd just be wrong? To what we were previously talking about. Whoa, the bad faith tactic of not pivoting. I, uh, <laughs> no, well, it, it is pivoting, but you also didn't add, answer <sighs> when I ask what is a woman. Didn't answer that. So, when actually, did yeah, you ask that? We can answer question. that really. Easy. I'd love to answer that question. Sure. So yeah, the, the reason the reason we didn't the probably the reason that we didn't um, answer that question is we didn't hear it. It's a really easy question to answer. Um, we think that a woman is somebody who identifies with a certain female social archetype.
What is a, wait. a certain female yeah. social archetype? Yeah, exactly. So what we see in society, right? Um, I understand it's complicated, but there is like a, a sort of like archetype of what we consider to be like a sort of like feminine, like a thing we imagine, right? And like um, a masculine sort of thing we imagine. Um, when somebody who's somebody has like gender dysphoria, it's very likely that this person, because of that dysphoria, will then identify with like say um, that feminine social archetype as opposed to like a masculine one. If they're like a, like a trans woman, for example, um, the what you hear sometimes is a woman is somebody who identifies as a woman, right? This is just a more philosophical, nerdy definition, so that for the extra clarity, um, so that it doesn't like reference itself. Exactly, yeah. And by female, you're talking about biological female. I'm talking about like a, a general trend of associations that we have that like biological females are more likely to have. More like but the aesthetic of female, femininity yeah, in a sense. Yeah. No, no. But when you said a woman who identifies with certain social. Uh, aspects of a female or characteristics of a female by uh -huh. female you mean like the social aspects of femininity female. um yeah. no just the social things that we associate with no, femininity. No, hold on. You, you, you're talking about a biological female is what you're saying so it's the associations we have right not the biological female itself it's not some a woman is not somebody who's a biological female right no, no, we have a bunch of associations we have a bunch of associations we have a bunch of we have a bunch of associations you Oh my God, we have a bunch of associations, right? With what a biological female acts and does and behaves like, so, right? That's what I'm saying. When you said, use the word female, you're talking about biological female, correct? I've said biological female like 80 times now. That's not what you said the first time. I don't think you said biological female the first time. Probably didn't say it the first time. When I say female, I'm referring to biological female because that's what that means. That's all I was asking. That, okay. And I answered it like eight times. True, but when you talk about the characteristics or you know aspects associated uh, with a female, biological female, uh, is this up to every individual's interpretation of what that is? What do you mean? So if someone identifies as a woman, uh, it, 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 but they could just they they could still wear like uh, blue jeans and like bench three fifty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They could, yeah, uh, yeah drink beer and not paint their nails yeah sure still. but how is that identifying with uh like the, the female archetype yeah a, do you under uh, so do you understand the difference between like an identity and like an action sure okay so you could you could identify right as like a debate bro right but that doesn't mean you have to like say gish gallop right for example sure Okay. I, I you can still re probably have to if I identified as a debate bro, I'd probably have to do things that debate bros do. Yeah, that's that, that would act like for one of which calling would, yourself something that you aren't. Wait, so Lauren, if I asked you like what what is a Lauren? What is somebody who's Lauren, right? We'd say somebody whose name is Lauren, right? It's a name. Lauren is a name, yeah. Yeah, Lauren is a name. And so a Lauren is somebody whose name is Lauren, right? What is a what does a Lauren have to do? Yes, but Lauren isn't a social category. Yes, uh, it is. Yes, it is. It's a word. Yes, it is. It's a word. No, 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 no. Comparing a person's name that can be an, applied to various different groups. It's not a grouping. I mean, it's. Yes, it is. But it's not a specific. It's not as specific as woman or man, right? It's just like. It's like, less specific. Any, uh, it's more almost, specific. Sorry. You can call you can call anything a Lauren. You can call a stuffy a Lauren. You can call things that aren't human a Lauren. You can't call. In this case, know, I think the context was pretty clear. We're talking about a Lauren Southern right now. Okay, whatever. Continue. I'm sorry. Do you have like a response? Sorry. How is this anal analogous to something like woman, which deals with, uh, like you said, it's someone who identifies with the. Uh, you know, aspects of a biological female. How is a Lauren so? Wait, can someone identify as Lauren Southern and be me? <laughs> you won't be you, but somebody could identify as Lauren and be Lauren because it's a name. So names work. Right. So they won't be you. Lauren. They wouldn't be this Lauren Southern. I agree. Right. They would be Lauren. Biological reality. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> you you literally use when you're talking about woman, you actually referenced a biological reality of a female. You you okay. True. 
So Let me I'm trying. <laughs> trying my best. I under. And there's a biological. Uh, uh, I said I'm for. Call Lauren Southern, right? There's a. There's, is, there a is there a biological human that we call Lauren Southern? This is a fucking name. Wait, nuance, nuance, nuance. A name. It's nuance, to do nuance, with, like, this nuance, 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 nuance. Is the Lauren Southern a human being that we give a name, the name Lauren to? A real biological reality of a human being? My know, whole chat are Lauren time now. Time. <laughs> That's great. I'm glad that we're all Lauren now. We are all Lauren. Everyone. <laughs> I will Lauren. accept that Lauren. Noron's new Lauren bro. We got Lauren bro over here. What do you want to say? Yes. So the idea is that um that there are certain social roles that we associate with female, but we don't we don't say that cis women have to meet those social will roles to like to or they, they don't have to perform every aspect of those social roles to be women right uh if a cis woman was doing all the things you just described you wouldn't stop describing them as a woman um identity seems to give the the most benefit as a as a categorical label so uh identity seems to be the, the best way to classify but well, what does that have to do with a name like how is yeah, that a person's name so a name is category. another category <laughs> yes it is no it's not what, what are the expectations the upon kind. someone who has a name it's oh a my god name, but it is a categorical what is it? What is it? Can you explain the expectation? Sure. What? They have the name Lauren. That's it. Is it? No, it's not that they have. Someone with the name Lauren. Like. Okay. What wait. Are the expectations? No, holy shit! Let us answer. Fuck. Answer, please. I'd love to. So the expectations you're asking for a woman or for a Lauren? Lauren. Sure. So the expectations for somebody who's Lauren. Um, we have a general expectation, I think, for this person to be like um to be a woman, right? Uh, we have a general expectation. Actually, have a lot of the same ones that we'd have for like. Um, like, uh, like, um, the same ones we'd have for a female, right? We'd assume that Lauren is, is a very feminine name, so we'd, uh, we'd assume this is going to be a feminine person, not a very masculine person. It'd be really weird if you were called Lauren. Yeah, these are, these are That's what an expectation is. Do you, I'm sorry, do I have to explain basic English to you? Wait, can you tell okay. me what an assumption is? So, like, if you're, if you're, if you're categorizing something as a human, it has to be, has to be a certain variety of things when you're Lauren, saying what is Lauren, an you're saying it it could be this we assume this but what is the categorical like if you are lauren you have to have this thing lauren like, why won't you, you tell me what table, an assumption is you have to be an object that is not living that typically is four legs but you know there are some okay. categor lauren. categorical items that you have to fall under lauren so an assumption right here's the definition of an assumption a thing that is accepted as true or is as certain to happen without proof. Does that sound like an accurate definition? But to be a Lauren, you don't have to. Can you answer that question? Does it sound like an accurate definition? Sure. But what if I told you that was the definition for expectation? <laughs> hey, okay, fine. Well, then what is. <gasps> what if I told you the fact you didn't know I was lying about that proves that there's no fucking difference between the words? <laughs> devil Alden. Like, anyway, the Devil Alden. I, I th feel like you think you got an O in there. That was a big O. No one understands what the fuck you're talking about. That's I'm saying crazy. assumption and expectation are these, they mean the same thing. They are synonyms. I heard the what? closer okay. you get to your mic and the faster you talk, the more right you are. I hear that the less arguments you have in response to the things I say, the more wrong you are. That's right. If you talk faster That's... and you get closer. And you go the Where's your counter argument? What's your counter argument? <laughs> <laughs> He's just like he's like raging out and not addressing the arguments. Like I, I, I don't know. I don't even. Know the, the, it doesn't. This was it. Like thing <laughs> tied to like what a woman is and referencing biology in that definition. Whoa! It, it makes no sense. I, I'm pretty sure. I, I feel safe saying most people are like, well, "What the fuck are you even talking about?" When you bring up, you'd have to be, you'd have to have like a belt sander to your brain to not understand this. Not use uh, the word expectation because he's using that to try to semantics his way out of actually giving definition. I'm so, sorry. What definition what do you want? Is, so what? What do you have to have as a quality to be a Lauren? What do you have to have as a quality? What What is necessary as a quality would just be yeah. identifying as Lauren. Right. So what is necessary as a quality to be a woman? Identifying as a woman. I already answered this question. Okay. So nuance bro. There we go. You Sorry. You just have to well, hold on. You were accusing me of you were accusing me of semanticsing away from the definition there. The definition I had already given you. 
I'm the we're, we're the bad faith ones, really. The definition actually is like because first. No, I didn't. Female, which is biology, and then you. I said identifying. Identifies as a woman. I said identifying as a certain social archetype, right? The for the female social archetype. Then I specified, even clarified immediately after what we usually say. And that's the more like nerdy philosophical version. What we usually say is a much simpler version that means the exact same thing, which is a woman is somebody who identifies as a woman. So we did give you this definition. It's been said several times during this conversation. Again, You're pretending we didn't because, definition. yes, in both forms. The actual word itself that we're asking you to define, you can't use that. He's, he's, That's the point. <laughs> Take the belt sander off your brain. Like, are you serious? That's the point. That's why we gave you both of them. He's trying to say that words like woman and man are as arbitrary as names. Like that they're just something you decide to have and they don't actually define. What you is that what you that, you're saying? That's all words. That like that's all words. Okay. We pick words based on what the most useful way to call it. The, we pick words based on how useful it is to define it that way. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I just don't even see where, you know, when you try to have these debates and discussions, you usually try to find common ground. But if we're just going to deny reality and say, what oh, reality name are we that you're given, you know, just an arbitrary ass name, whatever, it's just. Uh, individual signifier or something it, it, that's effectively the same as what your who said that gender is who you guys said just, that wait what do you mean didn't say it's I, effectively the same we said that there's an analogous you, of aspect that isn't the aspect the that you just said like right the aspect isn't that. the part that you're just analogous. okay oh all right are we we're trying to explain like entry level like philosophy 101 philosophy of language shit like this is super simple we pick words Dude, based on i love i've noticed i've noticed i've noticed hold on so the in the case of the in the case of the thing we're describing to you the point is just when we pick a definition for a word we pick it based on what's useful there's not some true platonic ideal of the word that we pick out there's not a central word authority the words don't come down from god we just pick them out they're just words right and when we pick out a word like a, like a name for example right? We pick it out based on what's the most useful way to describe that. And in the case of a name, the most useful way to describe a Lauren is somebody who identifies as a Lauren. The most useful way to describe a woman is somebody who identifies as a woman. And when you ask this, ah, you can't use the word in its definition. That's why we give you the more nerdy philosophical version, which is a what uh, you, you disagree with a definition. Uh, so here's what I just, I, I don't think that woman is just a word that's as arbitrary as a name that's used to signify an individual person. Every word is that, ev the point is that no, every no, no. word is that it arbitrary. Clearly no, they have like real meanings are... behind them. Woman yeah. has a real meaning. What's the them. real meaning behind woman? Tell me. Female. Why What's the matter? real Why meaning behind female? The, the, the same, pretty, pro probably, you guys you notice that all of these words? The definition of female. Probably, well, okay, probably, but what we're going to go down on this path is what we're going to go down to all words are going to be defined by words, right? So all words are just words that we're making up for shit. So every word is going to be arbitrarily That's determined the based ridiculous on- ridiculous argument I've ever heard. All <laughs> words have language and language is not- Because language is made- because language is made up, we can, can make it up however it we want. That's the argument. Real That's things that matter. Well, yeah, versus like identity. Like, identity is a real thing that matters. If it's just a word, why does it matter so much to trans women if matters. they're called women? And a name is like, a unique signifier. The, these are different things, and they're not all just, well, Lauren, I because can words are made up, everything's made up, it's all arbitrary, it's the same. No, that's uh, that seems pretty ridiculous. I'm not going to go back and forth on the same point 35 times with nuance, because he, he just can't understand it. What'd you say, Lauren? I couldn't hear you. Nuance interrupted you. I, I guess it's just I a word understand. with no meaning. Like, why why even have gender in your world? Why why does it matter so much to trans people that they're called woman and that they're perceived in a certain way if it's just a word with no meaning behind it? I never said it was just a word with no meaning. I said it was a word that we can ascribe all sorts of different meanings to. I think that this meaning of the word uh, provides more validation to trans people and has generally more social utility. But I think any word can be arbitrarily defined based on how, how useful it is to define that word that way. Okay. Can, can you do that for uranium? Yeah, it's most useful to find uranium as the... the what is it? I twenty four. You're saying useful, the, but could you really just define it as anything? Because it's a word we just made. You could define it. Could you define yeah, it as? You like, could. Uh, you technically could. It wouldn't be very useful. Could you? Could you define it as this rubber ducky right here? 
You could if you wanted to. It wouldn't be very useful, though, right? That's stupid. That's you, not real life. Be very useful. This is not, it wouldn't not be real very, life. Exactly, because it wouldn't be about. useful to do, right? Because nobody would do something <laughs> so stupid. It's, okay. it's because somebody, somebody wouldn't do something so useless. I agree. No, so it's not I, I real. Think, no, no, no. You, I you think, can't do that. It's not real. I don't. Like, no, you, te you technically I'm so could. Glad. You technically could call your rubber duck. You could be wrong. Yeah, just, yeah, you could be wrong. If I, if I name, if I, if I name my, hold on, I, really quick, nuance bro. If I name my rubber ducky, like if I, if I name it, I name it Lauren. Is it wrong to call it Lauren? Is it incorrect? No, because it's a name. Perfect. If I call it uranium, uranium yeah, if I name it uranium, when we talk about uranium, the actual element, it's a name. It's a name for an element. You a definition, you didn't you? Uranium, you just, but that doesn't you just make them uranium. You understand? You're saying you gave a definition to what uranium is, right? By saying it's the actual element. So you give so, it a different definition in that situation. It's almost like it was more useful to define uranium as the name and or as the rubber ducky when we had it as the name, but it's uh, also more useful to define it as the element when I'm it's the element. And in most cases, it's more different. useful to define it as the element. Can, can I ask your question? They're not the element. When you call someone, okay, a, a woman, like, Okay, you're identifying is when Lauren, you are not a biological Nuance is going to say the exact same thing he's been thing. saying 35 times over. Can you say what you want to say, Lauren? Oh, well, this is... This is like the craziest you, thing I've ever heard. What do you feel about the fact... Like, I... Okay, so I understand when, when you, you're talking about, like, social utility of words. Like, wor definitions and, and words can be fluid to a degree. Um, but it's almost majority rules for how useful a word is. So even like the word gender and sex, um, feminine, masculine, th these have been changed by feminists in particular who wanted, you know, social roles of genders to be separate from biological sex. So feminists really pushed for like ideas of masculinity and femininity and gender to be separate. Now that's kind of changing with like the transgender push, but I understand what you're saying where, where definitions of words can change over time. Currently today, if you polled the entire world, not just Twitch, you know, not just a high school in, in a first world country, the vast majority of the world would say the social utility of the word woman is a biological female. Why would you pull to the average? Why would you pull the like general population? You're going to be talking about the local culture in which you're using the word, right? And because also, uh, what, 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 the what, what, world is switch and it's not a high what, school class. The world doesn't speak English. <laughs> you're only going to be talking about but the people are, who you're communicating. Are... That's all we care about is the people that we're communicating with. You wouldn't care about how somebody in Australia uses, or not even Australia, because Australia is going to have overlap right. with uh, American. Um, right, which is which is why we try to have some. We, we try to ensure uh, there's some conformity in in language we use. Which is why when people use language incorrectly, we usually look at them like they're an idiot. We correct them. We try to ensure that the groups around us use language correctly. Now there's a push so, a going on. There's so a pull I from agree. Which to say the word woman should mean one thing, and a pull, pu uh, push and a pull from the general population to say it should mean what it has meant for the last, you know hundreds of years, right? So you guys are on the pole side of saying woman should mean this. It doesn't mean anything. We can define it how we want, but the majority don't agree with that. So right now, the social utility, you are going against the social utility of the word. So I don't, that's not really what the word utility means, right? Utility isn't just um, the the most communication. Um, there's there's a lot of things that we can get utility out of other than just communication, right? A word can also have utility for um, in the sense that it can uh, provide validation, that it can um, that it can have uh, less, uh, that, that it can provide uh, more specific categories, that it can be more distinguishing. Uh, that there's a lot, uh, or sorry, that that is communication. Um, but that it can. Uh, that, that the word can sound nicer, um, that the word can be easier to say. Uh, that's a, that's another big thing is um, words have, uh, we've often changed words because uh, we want like newt, for example, it used to be an uh, but it, uh, we've, we've shortened it to just newt, which, uh, which means that it's like easier to say. And there's, a, there's lots of reasons which we would change the definition of a word or the word itself to, uh, to match a utility that aren't just speaking more clearly and uh, giving more context to a situation or um, to uh, having a, a more specific but definition. Nuance Bro is so frustrated right now because he is using the general use of the word woman. Like, it, like you said, no, he's not. Words are, all, words are only useful if you're using them in the way that the population use them. And the majority Who? of the population, wherever you are, will say that woman means biological female. That's not female. true. You, just because you're on Twitch, you may not, think differently. You, okay. But, Can I, I actually have just direct data on this. Um, Lauren, when we talk about like, 
women's and men's bathroom, right? We'd agree that these are like, these would be a pretty reasonable reflection of how people view like who is a woman and who is a man is who can go into which bathroom, right? No, because I think that some people would say that trans women can go into women's bathrooms. But as you've acknowledged at the beginning of this, a trans woman is different from a woman. A, a trans. No. Well, no, we didn't actually acknowledge that. And you didn't either because you just called them. You did say this at the beginning. They're different than cis women. They're different than cis women. No, 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 no. Better, <laughs> yes. You said they were be, different than cis. A better question would be if you asked people globally, can men have, uh, can men bear children? Can, do you have data on that? I would say no. You think so? Do you have data on that? Would I what? Do you have data on that or do you just make it up? Why would you ask that? globally? <laughs> Her specific that claim. That obviously, there, there Cause, cause so Her specific claim was that no matter where you are, right? It's so obvious America. that in a state like, or in a city like San Francisco or Denver, and I know because I've been in oh, these no, cities. No, believe me, I, I was born and raised in San Francisco. So exactly. When, uh, the the definition is probably going to be more like woman is somebody who identifies as woman, right? That's probably going to be what most people in San Francisco are going to tell imagine. you. I would imagine. Right. So, Laura, yeah. So, even Nuance agrees. Lauren, you're, you're claiming oh, that's that nobody. San that's not representative. That's Lauren, Lauren's claim was nowhere. It doesn't matter where was Lauren's. Claim. Oh no, I disagree. I think if you go to like Harvard or like you know some like ninety five percent voting for Democrat uh, campus, like yeah, they're definitely gonna. So nuance, bro, it does matter. I meant by country. I literally just said earlier. You don't. Twitch, if you go to Twitch, of course, their definition is going to be different. So there are specific Twitch is a country? Like, little subsections. No, you you're not understanding. I said you can go anywhere. I was talking about countries, but there are places within countries, small subsections like Twitch, like San Francisco, where you will get a different definition, but it's not particularly useful to use when you're talking to a general okay. average person, when you're online talking to, this is I don't know. pretty like, semantic and off the point. I, I agree. Um, what, what, what's useful about it is that most people, even if they, if they use one definition or the other, most people are aware that both definitions are in societal use, right? Both people, most people are aware that some people use woman to mean I don't think, who identify as women. Maybe in a Western conversation, I'd say most. But sure, we're talking about like the English speaking world and especially um, uh, our country, which is going to be America. And you're in Australia or Canada now? Uh, Canada right now. Canada, okay. Um, so yeah, exactly. It's going to be in the context that that matters. We're talking about uh, that we're talking about trans sports and we're talking about um the the get don't say gay bill in america um and, and i guess in canada too uh so I, either way that's, that's going to be super relevant to here sure okay um I, i'm gonna wrap um, up this debate I, okay. I need i i'm i'm late to get to a gaming thing i was supposed to do i i appreciate you all coming on here and having a mostly civilized discussion <laughs> even though we couldn't find much common ground i if we could quickly I'll just go around the circle. I'll, I'll start with Nuance Bro for once, since uh, I, I didn't do that throughout the debate. Nuance Bro, could you shout out your, give your final thoughts and shout out where people can find you? Final thoughts? Um, man, what can you even say? It was quite the uh, lively discussion. Uh, I feel like there's team reality and team everything's made up. The points don't matter whose line is it anyway. And uh, <laughs> maybe the other side might have a disagreement on whose side that is but uh yeah you can check me out nuance bro on youtube uh at nuance bro twitter instagram all that good stuff and uh uh we're gonna be with lauren at the better discourse event in dallas That's april right. 23rd i believe it is so uh check that out all right uh synth sure yeah um i'm synth on youtube i'm uh s-i-n-t-h-d it's but like sin the um you can find me on youtube on my own youtube channel you can find me on the crucible uh, where I'm the in-house left-wing left -wing debater. Um, I mostly debate the huge, mostly right-wing audience there. Come um, check me out. Cool. And uh, Phenomics. Hey, twitch.tv slash Phenomics, P-H-E-N-O-M-I-K-S. Um, you can also find me on Twitter at, at Phenomics. Uh, we do politics streams. I also am on YouTube as Phenomics, and uh, I'm uploading a couple of video essays soon, and we do debates on Twitch. Great. I, uh, I always respect people for jumping in the ring, even if I don't agree with them. So thank you both very much. Thank you, Nuance Bro. Uh, I will see you in Texas shortly. And you all have a uh, wonderful evening.